Yeah. How's the morning been? That's good. Good? Interesting. Always lots and lots of good stuff going on. Yeah. yeah. The boys have made the effort to come all the way up from Warnable for it, Jim, so... Ever been to Warnable? Oh, yeah. 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 I, never, I didn't talk down there before COVID. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you did too, yeah. 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 What Was are your that... memories? What are your, what are your first impressions? What, what do you take with you? Oh, it's a nice town. Yeah, <laughs> my my son. One of my sons went to a university there. He, oh yeah, he, yeah. He did a law degree actually, which yeah, is, right. and he, he he liked it too. Yeah. One of your best staff come from there, Jim. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, that's a negative. <laughs> <laughs> I hear a few of the podcasts, and do you have much kind things to say about him, or is he the sort of the the boxing bag? Yeah. This guy. Yeah. 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 No, Joel's Joel, Joel, done a brilliant job. He's uh, he's been. Uh, yeah. Very well recognised, especially over the past year or so. Yep. He's actually, um, we, we've had an extraordinary year. Before COVID, we were, we were flat on about 3,800 franchises for about three years. Yep. Yep. We are now in the time when we should be declining, if anything, because the labour market is the tightest. And obviously what we want, we've got plenty of work, what we need yep. is franchisees. So yep. this has been the worst year, it should be, for finding franchisees. Yep. We've grown substantially, and I think it's likely Joel's. Yeah. Joel's doing. He's, He's done important. a great social media campaign. Well done. And that's well done. what he was sort of just saying to us was, was it 2019 when sort of that, that idea of using social media a bit more yes. um, pumped up a little? And it came with a, started with Ask Jim. So Ask Jim was sitting, I sat Jim in front of my webcam. Yeah, and yeah. We, and we started asking, answering questions. Well, I asked the question on yeah, back in the ask, day, yeah. yeah. You yeah. watched the early ones, like the number one. <laughs> Because I remember the Buganda Gorillas as the footy team back in the day, and you, you didn't have one, and you said Buganda Gorillas would be your team if you were to make one. So, yeah. Yeah, because my, my kids kept on asking me, which football team do you barrack for? Because <laughs> <laughs> I refused to give them the <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Buganda. So, are they a real team? No, 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 no. I thought they might be rugby or Buganda was, a, was an African kingdom, which was on the, it's on the north shores of Lake Victoria, which is the sort yep. of the core of what's now Uganda. Yeah. That's where the name comes from. Um, that's where, that's where Kampala is. So, yeah, that's just a, a nonsense. <laughs> <laughs> that's brilliant. Would you guys want to start with the intro? Ready yeah, yeah. Ready, ready to go. We're already going. Okay, no, don't, right. I just speak to you guys. That was yeah, 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 yeah. Perfect. Yeah, bit of exactly chat. what we're doing. It doesn't have to be hard. Yeah. yeah. Um, All right. How many of these have you done? I do quite a few points. <laughs> <laughs> Very rarely in person, I must say. You, yeah. you guys got a lot of trouble to do this. Mostly yeah. just on the... No, we appreciate yeah, yeah. it. Thank no, you. we do Thanks appreciate it. Yeah. It's good from our point of view because it gives us exposure. Yeah. And, and, and you seem to entertain people, actually. I, I, really, most, I find most, most of these things go quite well. Yeah. And I like, I like to talk about anything and everything, including stuff that's nothing to do with business. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. We can get you going on a few of those things. Yeah. And that's what we sort of find, like, because it, work can sort of get in your head and it gets you so full, and this is sort of our little bit of a letdown. We do this sort of what well, outlet every yeah, couple of weeks, yeah. yeah, every two weeks we sort of do this. Well, and I, I enjoy business, but I like I'm interested in a lot of other things too. You yeah, know, I'm interested in, in science and epigenetics in my research program. I read a lot, a lot about business, but a lot about health, happiness, this kind of stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, everything. I probably read a couple of books a week. Yeah, I just lot, lots of interests. There's a lot of things going on. Mm. Are you That's a great. quick reader or a you deliver? No, I read, I read fast. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I also listen to talking books. Yeah, yeah, they're yeah, good. Yeah, like yeah, this morning I was, I was exercising and you know, run, doing a tra 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 run and, getting, and listening to this book called Dopamine Nation, which is really interesting. It's, yeah. about, it's about addiction and actually and why, help me understand things like why things like fasting and, and cold water and cold showers and stuff actually, they're like an anti-drug. They actually have the, the opposite effect, making people feel better long, in the long term. So right. It's just fascinating. It's just, this is just something I've come across in the last few days. 30 yeah. minute run, bare feet. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Bare yeah. everything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we better not do that. <laughs> better not say that in public. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a typical nightmare. Yeah. 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 Oh, that's good. Well, yeah. We'll, um, we'll do a quick do, intro. Do we we'll do an intro? Right, what yeah. we're doing now is the podcast, Jim. So essentially. Yeah, so. Yeah. I'll just do a bit of an intro and then we'll get chatting. So. Uh, right, hey guys, episode 10 of the Bricks and Banner podcast, and we have a very esteemed guest. We're very lucky to have uh, Jim Penman on with us. So, thank you very much for giving us your time, Jim. We know you're a busy, busy man, and uh, we're just very appreciative that you've uh, given us this opportunity to pick your brain about a few things. So, thank you very much, mate. All right, yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, we'll get into it. So, Dookie, do you want to start us off? I was just going to say we've been invited 
did, were we invited or did we sort of force no, our think way? No, you yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Down at this wonderful, it was the Swinburne University yeah, once it was upon too. a time. Yeah. Murrubuck yeah. campus. That's down right. in Murrubuck, and yeah. um, you're in a whole different world down here. It's it's amazing. Yeah, it's um, amazing how vast and big it is. It's brilliant. Yeah. You probably don't need to leave for anything, do you? Oh, no, I know, I live next door, actually. I walk across. Yeah, 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 yeah. yep, yep, yep. Yeah. Yep. Oh, unreal. Brilliant. So. But yeah, so Jim, we'll just start, or wouldn't mind going back, just tell us a bit about your childhood growing up, where you, where you grew up and how that all came about. Uh, grew up in Adelaide mainly, yep. until I was about 14, and yep. went to Sydney for a year and then Melbourne after that. I don't know what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah no, 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 no. I had one question, and I get asked this one a little bit, um, but what would you give yourself advice as a 15-year-old? If you were to, to go back and sort of give yourself any advice as a young fella, what would it be? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think um, there's, there's, more, there's more future in gardening than I ever thought at the time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I absolutely. I've done gardening jobs mostly since I was about eight years old, but, yeah. but I never, never actually thought it'd end up being a career. Yeah. yeah. Um, you didn't do the lemonade and squash as well at the no, same time? <laughs> no, I didn't. I, I, I just started off doing some work for a neighbour across the back fence, Mr Tapley. He used to rake his driveway and stuff. I don't think I was particularly good at those days, but yeah. I've always done it. I just love being outside and stuff. So yep. I never thought of being in business. Yeah. I, I don't know what my young self would have said about that. You know, you're going to end up, you know, you, you'll do an academic thing, which is what I thought I probably yep. would do. And then, and then you're going to go into business with a lawn mowing contract, right? <laughs> Did you, you're nuts. Yeah. I don't believe you, old man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and that could be part of it. You know, as a 15-year-old, no one knows what they're going to do. And, and I really struggle with talking to, to kids that are about to leave school that they need to know when they're 15, 16, choosing their university sort of courses, what they're going to be for the rest of their lives. And... And I, I certainly didn't. I, no, no, I've done a lot of yeah. different things. And, oh, um, I had a lot of stupid stuff. I went to university to study sociology of all stupid things. And, and it was just rubbish, rubbish, yeah. rubbish. <laughs> if I'd have known what I know now, yeah. I, would have, I would have gone in for history still, but I also yep. would have gone for biology. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. History and biology together, that would, that would, have, been, that would have been the place to go. So yeah. we have some idea, but where did your curiosities lay as a child? I love dinosaurs. Yeah, yeah. Crazy about dinosaurs and therefore evolutionary thinking and so yep. forth. Yeah. And I also loved history. Yeah. So for, when I was 14, I, somebody gave me a copy of the Thucydides, the Peloponnesian Wars. Yes. And I became absolutely obsessed with this idea of civilization decline. Yeah. Yep. Why does civilization decline? And I used to read up lots and lots of books about the late Roman Empire and this kind of stuff like that. Yeah. So just very asking questions. Yeah. You know, basic questions. I loved um, The Naked Ape by Desmond Morris. Mm. That was a big influence on me. Probably had a pretty sexy cover, which didn't yeah. hurt <laughs> <laughs> when you're 15 years old. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, th this idea that you can understand human behaviour in terms of our animal antecedents and stuff, yeah. that's something that really fascinated me. Well, that's where we come from. Yeah, yeah we it? do. Mm. We are 98% we are the same genes as chimpanzees. We're very, very similar. Even things like uh, Desmond Morrison talks about um, how women's breasts, why they're so large. It's because when we moved from mating from behind to mating in face to face, yet there had to be equivalent stimulus. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep, yep, and yep, the yep. lips are the same thing, replacing you know what. So it's a special stimulus. That, that idea fascinated me. Yeah. And, and I think the idea of that a, when, a, when a baby's born, and whether this is true or not, when a baby's born, they look very similar to their father. And does that come from that tribal sort of, so they know who the father <laughs> was at the time? I don't is know. That, yeah, that's what no, I, I don't know. told that day. Like something when along Thea those was lines. born, they reckon she looked like me, and now she's yeah. a dead ringer of her mum. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't um, think they just look like anybody. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I must say, I love kids, like but the first couple of years, not quite so good. After they get to be about two and start toffing around, absolutely adorable. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. why I've yeah. got ten of them. Yeah. yeah. There has to be a reason for I'm that. only seven behind, so I'm, I'm trying. <laughs> no, you'll, you'll catch up. He's trying. I'm nine behind. I've we had Peter Costello as the guest here, and and and, uh, and, and I, I was welcoming him. He was a, he was a speaker, and, and and I said, Peter, you said one for mum, one for dad, one for the country. How about one for <laughs> mum, one for dad, and eight for the country? <laughs> <laughs> You're doing everything for the country. Yeah, that's yeah. right. I think it's, so. Um, I think so. So it's your pa passion lays in history, and you've written a book at the front that we have here. So yes. it, it, how much time and energy do you put yourself into, um, or devote to that? 
Um, not a huge amount these days because yeah. basically I've got a research team. I've just I've got a they've been we're spending a few million dollars a year just on pro uh, project looking basically we're working with rats. Yep. Yep. And we're looking at. Um, Trying to, in a sense, reverse engineer the beneficial effects of food restriction. Yes. Um, looking at looking at pheromones, looking at microbes, um, cytokines, micro RNA, uh, methylation, all kinds of things like that to try and, and do it. And if we can succeed in that, it, it should be a very good way of treating problems like um, drug addiction, alcoholism. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Right. So that idea of fasting is sort of to reverse engineer what are we eating too much is what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. But in a sense, what we're trying to do is to, is to do it so that you can achieve the beneficial results without needing to fast. Though yep. actually it would make it easier for you to fast because it would help people become more self-disciplined, more long-term thinking. That's the yep. idea. And We've seen some good results with rats. We know, for example, that if you expose rats to the, um, the bedding of calorie-restricted rats, they tend to act as if they're calorie-restricted. Yep, yep, yep. And yep. if you actually calorie restrict the fathers and then you make them and they never see their offspring. The offspring act as if they're calorie restricted. So yeah, there's, yeah. there's ways of actually influencing this. And if you could achieve those effects, it would solve a lot of problems, not only drug addiction, but also things like um, uh, poor academic achievement, for example. You should help people to, uh, to achieve more. You should help them to lose weight, yeah. to, keep, to keep fit, to become more disciplined. It would achieve a whole lot of things if we could, if we could achieve the beneficial effects. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And just staying on that, on the diet and routine, are you very strict about your diet, routine, exercise, all those kind of things? Well, I don't know about strict, but I, I'm, I'm pretty rigorous about half an hour a day, at least a vigorous exercise. And I probably walk about another 5,000 k's just in, in general life. So I keep very active. I, I 16 and 8 fast. Yep, I yep. don't eat between usually before one o'clock um, in the afternoon. Yeah, right. Yep, yep, yep. I'm interested in yeah. this because I'm yeah. just transitioning from from that, it so works. I find it. I used to do it re yeah. religiously, and it works quite well. Yeah, yeah. It's very powerful, actually. Yeah, it's yeah. really it's a really good exercise. It's actually very good for your cells because it sort of cleans out the muck and stuff. Yep. And as a side effect, it also makes it a little easier to keep your weight under control. Mm. I so aim to be twenty two BMI. I don't, that's that's my aim. I don't want to go beyond that. Yeah, so yeah. I mean sixty six, sixty seven kilos. So can almost. we just explain that a bit further? Something I've never done. Just for anyone who is viewing that hasn't body done that. body so max index. Oh, sorry, is, the the fasting like the, oh, the yeah. six to eight. Sorry, so when do you fast? Well, I usually, I would usually, well, I normally finish my meals by seven or eight o'clock at night at the latest. Yeah. And then I don't normally eat before one the next day. I'm not, yeah. I'm not fanatical about it. But, yeah. But I yeah. just, just, it, it's pretty easy. And yeah. you get yeah. used to it and you feel a little bit of hunger at times, but then yeah. you do something else and forget about it. What about coffee and sort of things until that one o'clock in the morning is there? Oh, the only thing I, I have is um, what I call wham, hot water yep. and milk. Yeah, yeah, right. A little bit, okay. a little bit of soy milk. So it's like, it's like coffee without the coffee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't, right. I don't believe in drinking coffee. I don't yep. believe in caffeinated drinks at all. Yep, yep. yep. Um, and that's that stimuli, that yeah. sort of that imbalance that you're talking about. Yeah. yeah. I was a Mormon for quite a long time too, and oh, I still I keep that. The, uh, coffee, tea, alcohol, tobacco, just absolutely not. Yep, 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 yep. yep. Yeah, beautiful. Um, so we're just about digging into a bit of the franchise stuff. So obviously you've got over 5,000 now, is it, franchise? Nearly 5,000. Yeah, nearly 5,000. So... Um, what would you say is your um, be the hardest part about getting that up and going from probably when you were younger to to now? I was learning how to do it correctly. I had yep. no comprehension of what I was doing at the beginning. All I had was a vision, and it was a correct vision. It was yep. the central idea. If I'm going to be successful, I need to my franchisees and the fans. Yep. So I designed a contract right from the beginning. It took me nine months arguing with lawyers that was as favourable to franchisees as I could make it. And they yep. kept on telling me, you're mad. This is not how you do things. But I kept on looking at all the different things that were wrong with other systems, and I, and I put them into the contract. For example, I gave my franchisees absolute right to any work from their territory, but they could work wherever they want. They could have as many employees as they want without paying any more in terms of fees. Yep. Because our fees are based on a percentage. They're, they're a fixed fee plus a lead fee. Yep. Um, they had the right to control their own clients. We can't take regular jobs off without their consent unless the client asks us to. So things like that. And then with time, we actually made even more. We give franchisees the right to move to a different franchisor, to vote out their franchise or to veto changes to their own manual. So I wanted to design a system that was very franchisee friendly. But having said that, I didn't really understand the process. One thing I didn't understand is how important the personal element is. Yep. 
I thought franchising is a matter of giving people work and business advice. But what we've found is that it's the, it's the relationship that matter, relationship with the franchisor, relationship with other franchisees. Mm. So things like meetings, franchisors ringing regularly to a franchise, at least monthly, ideally weekly, all those things. And then just, just everything can people feel part of a community. Yep. Now, and I didn't know that. It yep. took us years to figure it out. Yeah, and that's we great. sort of had that conversation this morning about you can have the, the most rigid structure for, for work, for religion, for, yeah. for whatever, but the variable in there is person, you know, human nature. Yeah. You, can't, you can't prepare yourself for the different, you know, tangibles there. So it's, it sounds like you've got a nice little ecosystem there and you've got enough structure, but you've still got enough room uh, for personality. Yeah, it, that sounds very static. It's wildly changing all the time. Yeah. We're yeah. always doing things that to improve what we do. Yeah. Every day, every one of my 5,000 close to fran have franchises have my email address and phone number. Yeah. And they contact me often all about all kinds of things, issues yeah. with the system, ideas, problems, all kinds of things. I, I get several contacts with franchises every day. Yeah. And the biggest problem is people say, that's crazy, how do you do that? And I say, the biggest problem is they don't contact me enough. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. They sometimes don't hear about things that I should hear about. Yep. Or somebody will contact me at a problem and then it's been costing them income for four weeks. And I say, why did you contact me four <laughs> weeks ago? Yeah. yeah, And we sort of say that too. Like you, you want to be seen as that duck swimming upstream, you know, and in your business, pat on the back, looks very, you know, organised and structured above the water, but under the water, there's all those moving parts and it's pretty constant, frantic. Constant, constant frantic innovation. I put a yeah. list together just last night of all the things we're trying to achieve. It's about that long, major, yeah. different yep. things that we need to do and to work on this year. Yeah, and do you have sort of what what sort of goal setting do you do you run with? I'm a one, two, and five year goal setter, um, or has that changed over the years? Well, we, we certainly we certainly watch numbers. It's quite exciting when you hit major milestones. Yeah, yeah. I want to hit five thousand. It's going to be a bit of a party, so <laughs> it's fine. And you're very data strong, aren't you? Oh yes. Yeah. yeah. We measure everything. We look at things like attrition rate, for example. That's probably a, one of the major ones. Um, what proportion of franchisees are you leaving, are you losing in a year? Yeah. So how many in the first year? We actually, we actually um, lose around about 12% of franchisees in their first year. Now, they're yep. not always people who fail, but the ones who leave tend to be those who've got poorer customer service ratings and so forth. Um, not always, but, but usually that's the case. And that's okay for you. That's natural. Yeah. And that's, that's pretty good, actually. Yep. When, you, when you look at the figures... People who go into independent cleaning and gardening businesses, the actual first year attrition is, is, is like 90 to 95%. You can look yep. it up online. Yep. That's what it is. Ours is 12%, but that's too high. Yep. So why, is, why can't we get that below? And then we have another figure, when we, we do a survey of our franchisees every year, one of the questions, we ask them a lot about support. How often does your franchise will ring you? How often do they, how quickly do they get back to you? How helpful are they? We also ask them questions about income. Yep. So we ask, is your income good? satisfactory poor. Now that's their personal mind. That's, that's not asking how much you're making. That's yeah. just saying how do you feel about it. Okay, traditionally speaking about 10% poor this last year, 8% poor. That's yep. good. Yep, yep, yep. But I'd like that to be zero. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Those kinds of figures are the ones that we really, really look at. Room for improvement. It's, but it's interesting improvement. just saying that then. Like, it's a bit of a social sort of thing that gets thrown around, you know. If you make it through your first 12 months of business, you know, you, you've done well. Look, there's a huge uh, loss rate in that. But what you've sort of said there might have hit that on the head. They're probably all independent contractors without that, you know, that help from, from someone like yourself. So once you are structured within gyms, well, you've probably got that help and support. Well, you so. keep on looking at things. Like, for example, for many years, our, we were losing about 17% per annum. Yeah, yeah. right. Yeah. Big difference is we set up a very organised, structured training program. Yeah. And as soon as we did that, the first year, attrition rate dropped to 10.5%, even, even better than now. Big numbers, yeah. But every course that you do, we measure every course. We get the people who prospects to actually rate the speakers, including myself, yeah. in the two talks I give. And we look at that and say, why isn't this working out well? Why isn't that coming through? But every, every session is saying, what's wrong? How can we help you to be better? How can we give you more chance of succeeding, more chance of making a better income? Yeah, yep. yep. That's amazing being in the complex here because you do all the training and that on site here, yes, don't you? So, do. And that's just like a credit to you and, and to obviously Joel and the rest well, of the crew. That's why we bought like, this place, actually. Yeah. We, 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 need, we wanted a place people could actually come. We could have our national office, we could also have people trained, and we also have people living on site. Yeah. So it becomes yeah. like a community. Yeah, absolutely. It's really, it's, it's really quite intense. And we, 
we did bring our workout gear, but we're a bit disappointed to see that. <laughs> well, I'm disappointed too. We were supposed to be there. <laughs> We were supposed to be finished months ago, but because yeah. of labour shortages, yeah. hopefully January. Yeah. Jim's Jim, that is. Jim's so, Jim's yeah, yeah. right. So got to got to keep fit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Is, what are we got? Racquetball or squash court? Up there, are they the same? No, no, no. no, no Racquetball is yeah. different. Racquetball yeah. you can hit off the roof. Yeah. It's a big yeah. blue ball like yeah. that. Squash is like a little black one. Yeah, and it's got the tin and everything else. And you're a squash man. Yeah, I've played yeah. squash. I haven't played racquetball much, but I've told it's better. So I'm going to be really into racquetball. I love squash. Is great. Racquetball is great. I'm sure it will yeah. be too. It's really, really competitive and really exhausting. Yeah. You, play, you can play tennis. I could play tennis for two hours. So I wouldn't hardly raise a sweat because I'm terrible. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but with squash, I play for half an hour and I'm drunk. Yeah. <laughs> It's amazing it, with squash yeah. how long the rallies and stuff can go for too. You're in that oh, tiny box yes. and you can just keep going and you've always got to be on the move. I, oh, yes, I've only played it minimal, but it's, it's, a, it's, it's a really good It's a funny game because you can also hit so many different balls. Yeah. And yeah. the front wall's big, but you don't just hit the front wall, you're going to get killed. You've got to hit a high, low, soft side wall, even the roof and the back wall for racquetball. So yeah. it's just a really interesting game. It's interesting, com interesting, competitive, exhausting. That is exactly what I like to do. Exercise. Yeah, perfect. And a bit of strategy too. Yeah, so. yeah. Interesting. You got to, you got to, you got to, you got to think about where the other guy is or where they think you're going to go. Yeah. yeah. So if they think, if he thinks the ball's going to go over there and you can hit it over there, even yeah. if it's not such a good shot, it's a better shot because it, you, you're out, out foxing him. Yeah. We have a mate that uh, played tennis for Australia, and and he's. Not the most mobile of blokes. Not but anymore. He is brilliant. Like, so he's a tennis player, and he doesn't move. He, he makes you hit the ball to him. So the people that are better at these sports, it's they, they can see three moves. Lots oh, of strategies. So, that's a, that's yeah. Actually, I'm playing with somebody who's not quite so good as me. I have a lot of fun. I get them to run and back down. Just toys. Just, them. just torture them, just to get them, just so they can just get there and go get it, and then I <laughs> hit it back there. That yeah. is so fun. How often would you play squash a week? Oh, I don't. I don't. Haven't played for a while. Haven't played for a while. We yeah. had a, we had an arrangement with the local private club, but I was always expecting our our place to be ready. Yeah. And I haven't. Well, we have that's a segment right. that's Battle of the Agents, and uh, it, that's a bit of a sporting one. So I'll make sure we don't play you at squash. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that would be terrible. Yeah, to refer back to the, I guess it's a question we can relate back to your book and, and you know the history and that sort of thing. You're a very driven individual. Is that innate, or is that something that you've developed over time? Oh, I guess it's pretty innate. I've always yeah. been pretty driven, been competitive. I mean, you know, what sort of teenager spends all his time reading books about the decline of the Roman Empire? You, <laughs> have, you have to be a bit of a nerd. Socially completely inept. <laughs> <laughs> totally clueless. I didn't even know the names of most of the kids in my class. Yeah. But you ask me questions about Roman history or biology or something, and I'm one on top of it. Typical. Yeah. yeah. Typical. But how do you go dealing with that? Like, obviously, you've got a large... Um, you know, employee base here. How do you go, like, with name retention and things like that and trying to meet all your employees? Oh, I'm terrible. I'm also face blind to a large extent, yeah. so I, I yeah. find it hard to recognize. I've seen on uh, one of your videos, you try and take a photo of your franchisees to attach to a number in your phone. Is that right? To, like, yeah, sometimes yeah. I do. Yeah. See if you get out. I suppose that's a great way to remember them. Yeah. Uh, at least with my franchisors. It's funny, though, I can talk to the person endlessly on email, and when they come in, I won't recognize them. Yeah. But I don't see people that often. Yeah. My, yeah. my staff, I sort of vaguely know. But, do you prefer. Phone calls, email, or text? Email's good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, yeah, I live there. off emails. Emails are great. I'm a very fast typist. You can really respond. Mm. It's, it's in writing. It's firm. But it depends on what it is. Sometimes people just want to have a more of a discussion, and, yeah. then, a phone, and then a phone call is good. Yeah, yeah. Joel but, was saying yeah. you sometimes respond to people, and it's a generic sort of email just with a sign off of Jim at the bottom, and they don't realise that it's the Jim. Oh, they don't actually. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I actually had one occasion last year when I was when I was ring I, well, I ring people on anniversaries on 10, 15, 20, 25 years. And yep. One guy was ring, and uh, I said, "This is Jim from National." Obviously, he said, "You're not really Jim, are you?" No, I said, "Yes, I am." <laughs> I said, well, no, no, you're not. I know what Jim is. Nothing like you. <laughs> 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 Wouldn't believe me. <laughs> Look a little different to the, uh, the the caricature. I but, do, uh, but it's not a caricature. It's me. No, it, yeah, it is. Yeah, it is yeah. actually, if you actually yeah. look up Jim Penman yeah. images online, you'll see a picture of me with a beard and a hat yeah. in yeah. front of the old logo trial. That's actually taken from yeah. that image. Will the beard come back? No, the beard's no. gone. The beard will be white now. Don't I? I <laughs> yeah. Yeah. When did the beard go? I you got the t-shirt on too. Look at you go. Oh, we had the moustache last week. Okay. Is that all right? Is that yeah. <laughs> Look at that. That is oh, it's dead yeah, ringer. It is. Dead ringer. Look, it's yeah. 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 yeah, you can't even tell the difference. You get out there and do some lawns now. Yeah, yeah. yeah I could too. Bit itchy. 
<laughs> well, Luke's got a bit of a background in, yeah. in that space, don't you? Oh, yeah, it is interesting. So I, I had a bit of a, like you were saying, I went to school and then went to uni for a year or two and did marine biology, and then I actually did a greenkeeping apprenticeship. So I worked oh, on golf yeah. courses uh, and finished that up and come back to Warnall. We lived in Melbourne, come back to Warnall and had no job, no idea what I was doing. I just knew that I wanted to be at home and started up Lukey's Lawns. So, eh, <laughs> <laughs> didn't, didn't yeah. quite take off like nah, nah. Tim's did, but... It probably was a little bit behind behind that because yeah. you've got so much uh, influence over what everything, sort of gyms. Like, gyms is everywhere. And everyone oh, yeah. talks about gyms and everyone in Australia would know gym. So, no, nah, there's probably a little bit there, but uh, that only lasted a few months before getting into real estate. This so. is, it's amazing what you... What you, what, where you can start from almost doesn't matter. Yeah. What kind of person you are, what business it doesn't matter. What matters is if you go in every day and say, how can I do it better? Yep. I mean, the difference between me being a part-time student, lawn mowing business or a gardening yep. business and then buying a lawnmower, for example, mm. that was a big jump in itself. And just, just to where I am now, it's not one thing. It's thousands and thousands of little things every day of my life, including holidays, Christmas Day, every day. Yep. I'm asking myself the question, how can we do it better? How can we improve? It's that obsessional difference that makes yep that internal drive and that obsession and yeah. nearly the the addiction to, it's to really, getting better it's really fun too people ask how much you're going to take out for christmas well as little as possible <laughs> yeah. it's really really difficult not to work yeah yep. i try yep. not to work on sunday actually because it's the sabbath and stuff but yeah I, I just can't no nah, yeah. it, it's well it's enough i can't stop completely i don't work all day but I, I just have to at least do some emails yeah. and phone calls and i just have to what do you do to try and switch off I do a lot of gardening, actually, strangely enough. I've yep. got a farm. I'll be up there this afternoon. I'll be, yep. I'll be digging and, and chopping firewood and clearing blackberries and stuff. I enjoy yep. that kind of stuff. And what animals do you have on the farm? We've got some llamas. Yeah, llamas, yeah. Mm, yeah. yeah. Mostly, it's, mostly it's trees, like fruit trees and nut, nut trees. And, yeah. yeah. A few acres or? Yep. 250 acres, yeah. yeah. Beautiful. Good size. I go through the bush, putting, putting not, I can't do it now because it's a long time of the year, but just digging holes and putting nuts in it. Right, yeah, right, yeah. right, right through all the... Forested areas, yeah. It's we sold uh, Paul Jennings, um, the children's author. He had a house down in uh, in Warrnambool and he basically, it was just grazed land. Uh, and he basically did the same thing, just went and tried to turn it back to its native. Uh, and it's really odd because it's about 40 acres and you've just got farming land, farming land, farming land, and then just a massive corridor of trees and just yeah. bush. Well, this yeah. isn't native. This would be this would be a, a, an organic food forest. Oh yeah, you're yeah, right. I've got a guy working on. He's a mad on that kind of stuff too. He's a super super organic freak. He's, he's a great guy. Yeah. So you've got a few animals in there then. Just a like few just, llamas. Yeah, nothing yeah. much. A few llamas and some chooks. Not, not really very much. Has it attracted any natives though? I mean, kangaroos and. Oh yeah, it's got. And... They're all over the place. Yeah, yeah, they, yeah, they, yeah, they, yeah. They, Actually, the, the kangaroos and the uh, mostly the wallabies. They're about that big. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And the uh, the wombats, even the deer there, which is really a pest. Yeah. They're, yeah. They're, they, they eat everything, but they're, they're hardly because I'm around so often. They're not scared of me. Yeah. I can I can walk. You know, I can be as, that, as close to a wombat as you are. Yeah, right. Yeah. To me now, and they'll just sort of look at me and. <laughs> <wobble around. laughs> um, yeah. Beautiful. Any yeah, questions, mate? No, I'm, I'm pretty good. Yeah. Favorite superhero? I reckon I already know it because I just we just went and saw your office, so. Well, is that well, person a superhero? Uh, well, you're well, talking about superheroes. We're talking about... It has to, oh, you're a super Spi villain. Uh, Spider-Man. Yes. Spider-Man. Yeah. Spider I love the, the the first two Spider-Mans with Tobey Maguire. Yeah. Yes. I think they're, yeah, they're the best two. A couple of the best films ever made. Yeah. Because it's all about moral choice. Yes. Moral decisions. I really, really love that. With great power comes great responsibility, which yeah. is, to me, a, a, a motto for life. Yeah. yeah. But I probably am more into villains. You're quite right. <laughs> <laughs> when, whenever I was, my kids were watching um, Simpsons, if I hear if I hear Montgomery Burns, I'm, <laughs> I'm out there watching. Yeah. <laughs> That's oh, brilliant. I, I love I love Monty Burns. There's, I don't yeah. know if you've ever seen the one where he actually has a trillion dollar bank note. You know, yes, yeah, 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 yeah. I just yeah. love it when they've actually when they've actually escaped from Cuba and they're going back to the US. <laughs> and, and he says this. He says, "And if it's a crime to love your country, then I'm guilty. And if it's a crime to steal to take a still a trillion dollars and give it to your 
country's enemies. I'm guilty of that. <laughs> <laughs> and if it's a crime to bribe a jury to equip me, I'll shortly be guilty of that. <laughs> <laughs> I love Monty Burns. Yeah, it's very, but, very but clever. But the other, the other thing too, I mean, that's not that. I, I reckon um, Palpatine, yes. the, the Emperor in Star Wars. I think people don't understand from his point of view. He is a man who is doing everything he can to bring peace and order to the galaxy. I mean, he's the real yeah. hero of Star Wars, if you think about it. Yeah, he's not, this, yeah. not this Luke Stike one. <laughs> <laughs> but the only thing, I think George Lucas was very unfair to him because anybody who's clever enough to become Galactic Emperor, which he did, yes, okay, and then he tries to get his main follower, who's more stronger than him, this Darth Vader, to kill his only son. Yeah. yeah. That's ridiculous. Yes. What smart man would ever do such a thing? To kill your only son? So naturally he picks him up and chucks him down. That's the end. <laughs> he, he, yeah, he's a master people, manipulator, isn't people he? People do not... No, no, he... Because he, he, no, no serious galactic emperor would ever do such a thing. Oh, I agree. So yeah, I think the trouble is people don't see villains from their own point of view. They've got to understand the motivation yeah. of the bad guys. And that's one good thing about um, Spider-Man too. The villains are comprehensible. It's like the Green Goblin. Yes. Yeah. You know, you can understand why he did that. I mean, I could understand if somebody took my company away from me I, and I had the opportunity to, to, to charge them down with a ray gun, <laughs> yeah. I'd be sorely tempted. Yeah. I'm not saying I'd do it. How, how did you feel about the last one where all three Spider-Men were in no, there? I, 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 I got really it. confused there. No, no I, I didn't there. watch. I only watched the first two. I did yeah. see them. I did see it. But I, I, I never thought anything about those first two. Those first yeah. two were absolutely brilliant. I just yeah. love that idea. Moral courage, and I love the the editor, the one who was always down on him and so forth and stuff. It's a great character. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great, yeah. great actor. What's his yeah. name? I forget. Uh, I can't. I know the actor, it. but yeah, I've forgotten it. Uh, on the spot. No, no one's good but on to, the spot. But to me, to, I've always got a thing about villains. When I used to do, um, we used to do um, these things at um, Belgrave Heights. There was an evangelical conference, and I used to go out with other kids, and we did improv to basically entertain the kids, which was fantastic yeah. in this vast, open-sided hall. And you have this basic script that you were given to follow, but you could adapt it. Yeah. So yeah. the one one of the ones we did was um, I was like a television reporter, supposed to be a neutral, <laughs> a neutral person you know, <laughs> describing the life of Jesus, and, and the kids weren't reacting very well. So we actually made the television reporters the, the centre of the story. And I, become, I made myself the bad guy. Yes, so, you yeah, yeah. Like. so I'm a little bit puzzled how this guy who starts off as the sort of neutral good character becomes the villain. But, but I worked it that way. It was just so much fun. Oh, well, bit. We need villains, though, yeah. don't we? We do. So. If you look at any film, you've got yeah. to have a great villain. Actually, when I was at school, we did this school play. And, and I was Munro Murgatroyd, the, the, the bad guy. <laughs> what a name, Munro <laughs> Murgatroyd. Munro Murgatroyd. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's so good. And, 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 I, and I, went, I had this great speech, you know, and I was complaining about how I wasn't made the head boy of the school. He said, three, three years in a sixth form have I been, before which twice in fifth. Yet my experience is spurned. <laughs> this manly do-good standeth in my way, and that must therefore remove it be. I will too. And then I go on about how I was getting my wicked sister. Um, <laughs> and then at the end of it, there was this fiendish laughter. <laughs> 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 I used to go in the garage under the house. And they was what television program? <laughs> <laughs> So you had the monologue of the bad guy and everything. Oh, like, oh, that's brilliant. <laughs> like Richard the Third, you know, he's a great, he's a great character, a, bit, a little bit distorted from the from the historical reality, but it's a wonderful thing. I, yeah. I, I love, I love that play. Well, they've been around forever, haven't yeah. they? Did you see the version of Richard the Third where it was like set in the 1930s? It was a really, really great version. It was no. It's, uh, I loved it. I, it was, I loved it so much. It took both my parents to see it. Yeah, 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 yeah right. Beautiful. What about like films and uh, TV? Do you watch much of that? Or like it? Uh, a little bit, a little bit. Um, watching Big Bang Theory again. Oh, yeah. 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 That's good. Yeah. So you're music. pretty general then. It's well, a little bit everything. Really. I love historical stuff. You know, yeah. Things like the, the White Queen, the White Princess, Becoming Elizabeth, yeah. uh, Wolf Hall. You know, dramatisations of history I particularly like. Yeah. Um, and how far back in history are you most passionate about? Well, this was 15th, 16th century, which is pretty interesting. Yep. Yeah, yeah. But, but any good historical... There's a series called Rome, actually, which is fantastic. I've got, yes. the, I've got the DVDs of it, which is brilliant, actually, about, about what the, the events of you know, Julius Caesar and what happened afterwards and so forth. Yeah. A good historical drama. I mean, we, when I was a kid, his, historical dramas was terrible. 
but they have some really, really good stuff now. So, but, yeah, I need to go back and, and do a bit more history stuff because I got really worded up with like that. I watched a lot of stuff about the Second World War and the First World War, about how yeah. all that happened, and I got really tired into it for a while. But even if you like you're saying, if you go back further into your 15th, 16th, there's probably just as much stuff that's yeah, even more great, too. interesting. Yeah. Love ancient history, and ancient real? Greece. Probably my favourite period in all of history would be Athens in the late 5th, 30th, 4th mm. century, which was the most amazing period in human history. Yes. This, this little city, by, by modern standards, it, it covered a fraction of what modern Athens is. You have a few tens of thousands of people and, the, and their achievements in terms of architecture and philosophy and history and drama and painting were extraordinary. Yeah. Even, even there, the vases were, were amazingly works of art. I mean, what, is, what did these people have? What, what was about them? What was their character that could make them so brilliantly creative? Like we still live in their shadow, this small yeah. bunch of people. Mm. And is that sort of genetics and or epigenetics? Or, yeah, well, it's that's epigenetics. what I was saying. This is, is the, it the point. Food? Yeah, the it's, dietary. Well, no, no, not so much dietary. It's to do with a mixture of things. It could be diet. It could be. It could be practices to do with religion, sexual behaviour, to do with child rearing, to do with what your parents and your grandparents. It's how your genes are set up. Yeah. It's the interesting thing is that if you could actually understand. This is what this book is about too. The basis of how epigenetics relates to character and you could change that which with modern things like CRISPR is certainly coming about it's yeah. getting close to that you could actually have people who were extraordinarily productive and creative yep. you could make the average person more creative than the top one percent of people is now yep. the, the, the potential achievements will be dramatic and be it would include things like the ability to cure poverty worldwide for the cost that would be just like a similar to a um, limitless inoculation pill. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. Limitless. You yep. could do anything. Bring people. If you look at someone like um, Elon Musk, yep. I've just reread his um, biography by Ashley Vance. Yes. And this guy, what he did with people like things like SpaceX was extraordinary, and he had the greatest engineers just working in an unstructured environment where they could contribute yeah. and. Creativity. Amazing, amazing things. Actually doing space shots for a fraction of the price of anybody else just with great people. What we could achieve with really, really brilliant, great people. And we could all be like that. Because I don't think intelligence matters as much as people think. Yeah. Intelligence is probably only about 4% of achievement. The other 96% is character. And that character can change. Now, yeah. it can change as individuals. We can change it in their cells. But if we understood the epigenetics and the basic physiology, which we're very close to doing with my research project, then we could, then we could do it for anybody. Yeah. How do you feel about AI? Like that's getting close, like Elon and, and these sort of groundbreaking things. And then... Good, good potential. Yeah, yeah. Uh, do you see it being a positive or do you want sort of human nature to always win out? I t look, I tend to believe in technology as being positive. Yeah. I, I tell you, the one thing that really freaks me out is genetically engineered viruses, which yeah. I think is likely what COVID was. I don't care what anybody says. I reckon yeah. it came out of the Wuhan Research Laboratory. There's a book called Whatever Happened in Wuhan, which is really convincing about that. But that was obviously, a, even if it was released from there, it, it was an accident. Yep. But if you could genetically tailor a disease to be really, really catchable, like the Omicron yep. version, but had like 10% mortality, like, like the Spanish flu. Yeah. I mean, you could devastate a country in no time. Well, there's been right. movies about it for yeah, years forever, and years. Yeah. Like, so obviously the idea is there. We have a great civilization, but we are very vulnerable. And the other kind of thing is, is, is EMPs, electromagnetic pulse. Yeah. Yep. All you have to do is to let off a hydrogen bomb high in the atmosphere, just one. Yep. And you kill all the computers, all the, all the electricity. We'd be about 90% of the population would be dead within a yeah. year. Yeah. And that's... Yeah, it's a concern, isn't it? It's a big it's concern. Sort of, yeah. Security is a big, big issue. I tell you what, people do not understand how vulnerable we are. How, and the more our technology advances, the more vulnerable we are to any sort of problem like that. Yeah. Disease. Look what happened with COVID. I mean, COVID is not even that serious. It's like a 1% mortality. Yeah. The average Less age of the people who die from COVID is like above your life expectancy at birth. Yeah. 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 So as a disease, it's mild. If you compare it with something like Spanish flu, which is about 10% mortality, yep. or worse, something like smallpox or bubonic plague or any of those sort of things, they were many times worse. Yep. We are so vulnerable. And if you can start genetically engineering viruses, it becomes really, well, really dangerous. Well, we're losing yeah. those skills that you know, we once had to be self-sufficient. So your, your gardens, your veggie patches, yeah, yeah. Your, your, you know, your cattle or well, whatever That's what I do on my farm, support. actually. Yeah, I go yeah. up there and, yeah. I, and, I, and, I, and, I, and I plant stuff and I grow things and I, and yeah. I learn how to do it. And when we're talking about history then, what I was thinking is that history is an interesting one because 
it's, it's something that you look back upon and then study, but you don't study it as it's happening. You know, you don't call the last one or two years a, a research on history, do you? So will it be another 20 years before we look back and use that as a, a history sort of dialogue? Well, what yeah. I find is re reading books from the past, you can see what's happening around you presently. That's, that's what yes. I use it. So you use past, the lessons from the past to identify what's happening now and yeah. unfolding. So oh, yeah. I th I'm very aware of living through history. What's happening in Ukraine right now is, yeah. is yeah. amazing. This is an astonishing thing. Who ever would have thought it? Who ever predicted it? Yeah. Not me, not anybody, that the, U the Ukrainians would fight back so well. Yeah, yeah, mm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Against what was seen to be overwhelming powerful. I think it's Absolutely. an amazing story. Yeah. When I read up the paper in the morning off, online, of course, I just I, I go to the world section and see what's happening in Ukraine. Yeah, I just find it really interesting as a as a layman that other people aren't helping. I, I, and, and that's obviously uh, an unwritten rule or written rule within you know world wars and, and that sort of thing. But for them to be small, you know, fighting that back and not having much help. Well, they can't because it will escalate. Well, they've got yeah. lots of weapons yeah. and stuff and ammunition yeah. and things, which, that, which, is, which is what they need. But that's the thing. If you're giving them weapons and you're giving them everything, well, someone may as well be there. You know? Well, so, <laughs> if you're actually going to propose that NATO gets involved and start fighting <laughs> Russia directly, I think <laughs> maybe that would be I'll a little bit clear yeah, that yeah. one. Yeah. Lucky, you're not, lucky you're not the Prime Minister. Yeah. <laughs> We're already talking about dropping nuclear bombs on people, which is really pretty scary. Absolutely, it is. It is. It oh, is. absolutely, and that's something that's been around for what since Cuba. You were talking about Cuba. Um, well, there you go. The Simpsons with with their forecasts, <laughs> <laughs> they've yeah, been correct a, a lot of the hate. time. So, um, yeah, there we go. Uh, yeah. What about you boys? Which superheroes would you be? Um, I do love a Batman. Oh, I'm a Batman guy. He's dark. dark. He's dark. He's dark. Yeah. Yeah, as, as a yeah. hero, he's got a really good dark side. That's I, lo I love his. You yeah. like the gadgets? I do. I yeah. love the gadgets. I'm <laughs> swinging from buildings and stuff. Yeah. So I suppose similar to Spider Man. But yeah. no, I'm a Batman guy. I love Batman. Pretty superficial. Superman for obvious <laughs> reasons. <laughs> just... Straight to the top. Yeah. 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 What about you? Yeah. I think he's I'd... too. He's too. He's too invulnerable. That's my problem with Superman. Yeah. 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 I, I like. I like a. I like a hero who's. Who's vulnerable? That's yeah. fair. Which That's is fair. more modern, actually. Yeah. Yeah. But Superman's the original one, yeah. Yeah, oh, it's, a, it's a superficial answer, but I just yeah. think, well, if I had a Jim's uh, franchise, so Jim's yeah. mowing, yeah. imagine how many runs he could get done in the day. <laughs> how many could get done. So I think I'd be productive. Yeah. Yeah. I think I'd probably go with the Hulk. Like, I, I, I like the Hulk. Well, like yeah, in terms yeah. of Louis built just, like the Hulk, so it yeah. might be a bit yeah. Just so. paint him green. Yeah. yeah. Just in terms, well, you're talking about vulnerability, and I see him as, uh, I love the word vulnerable, um, and I like being vulnerable, but he's he's one that sort of, yeah, lives outside that life, and he's, you know, it's, it's, I like it. I think Very he could intelligent be, too, scientist. Mm, yeah, who's, so. who's your favourite villain, though? That's, that's favourite villain? Um, I Mine's Darth Vader. Yeah. yeah Darth Vader, he's yeah. a good villain. Yeah. 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 I like he's him. He's, he's vulnerable. vulnerable. He's vulnerable. Yeah. yeah. And that, that's why I liked him. And, he, and when I was a kid, I was very frightened of him yeah. as well. And was he born yeah. that way, though, or was he. What did they, what, you, from of... the prequels, we know what happened. No, no, he turned yeah. that way. Yeah, he I know, I know, but was he. I, just, I, I think know. the first six Star Wars, the first five, actually. Yeah. And, the three prequels plus, plus um, yeah. What do you call it? And up, up to up to um, Empire Strikes Back. Yeah, that were good. I like the prequels actually because it, it sort of explained how a guy becomes bad. Yeah, yeah. and it really is as a matter of love. Yeah, I mean, I would never be a Jedi. I, I like kids. I like yeah. sex. Yeah. I like yeah. I like children. Yeah. yeah, yeah, family and this kind of thing. Yeah. So, so in a sense, by trying to change him into this, this sort of, you know, like Someone a monastic not. figure. Yeah. yeah, it didn't. It didn't really. Yeah, it didn't it didn't work too well for him, and you can understand why he did it. It makes yeah. sense. The only yeah. thing that upset me is when they killed the kids. I really find that quite uh, off-putting. But yeah. apart from that, it, it's understandable. Yeah, yeah. And then revenge against for his mother, for example, that, that's mm. that's it's understandable. Yeah. I like, I, like I like to be able to understand a villain. I yeah, like yeah. to be able to see in their mind. I That's know. right. I don't know if I understand, but I like the Joker as a villain, especially like the Heath Ledger Joker, because it's yeah. just chaos. Yeah. You just don't yeah. know what he's going to do, and he's got. I think he, he just seems to have no morals. Yeah, they keep rolling so, like, out That's those a villain. Movies, just like, oh. Oh. I was yeah, a bit of a shame though. We we didn't get to see Heath Ledger, you know, unpack that role. Yeah, oh, yeah. Her, you know, yeah. Was, no, that's yeah. the beauty of it. You know, in a way. Yeah. 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 What about Thanos? Off. Have you no. dug into the multiverse yeah. at all? No, too no, deep. It's too deep for me too. Yeah, it, it, it gets a little. I don't want to talk about a way. Simpsons villain, Scorpio. You see that episode? <laughs> 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 that's, that's good. That's that weird. That's that my all-time favourite Simpsons Hank story. Scorpio. With Scorpio. Yeah. This super 
benevolent, friendly, democratic <laughs> guy who turned out to be a Bond super villain. Yeah. I love that. That is a good episode, though. It's yeah. quite clever. Yeah. And Homer, Homer accidentally stops James Bond there and then yeah, yeah, ends right. up being gifted the Denver Broncos and he didn't, didn't want them. So. Yeah. 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 All people climbing down. To yeah. Yeah. Just going with the machine, guy, having great fun. I, yeah. I, I love that. The Simpsons yeah. is a really clever... I yeah, mean, the way, very, they, very. the way they satirise everybody, they make fun of Rupert Murdoch, which is particularly funny when you think, you no, know, he owns the company. Oh, yeah. And, they're, and then yeah. they're, they're pictures of the, of the Republican. You ever see the Republican Party? And, and there's this castle on, on top of a hill with yeah. this, yeah. these, like, the vampires and stuff. And yeah. it's sinister. And, and the, the Democrats are, are, like, they're lisping in the kitchen. This kind of <laughs> so, it's, it's, it's a great it's show. It's pretty deep, isn't it? Yeah. It is. Oh, yeah, it is a thinking person's uh, The funny cartoon. thing about it, yeah. the great thing about it, too, is it appeals to kids. But I would sit there watching The Simpsons with the kids, and I'd be packing myself laughing. And they said, "What are you laughing at?" They couldn't understand the joke because it was it was a different well, level. Yes, yeah, but there was, a, there was a joke at the awkward phase of my life. Might have been eighteen or nineteen. Yeah. And I was watching The Simpsons, and my grandmother, yeah, she's, oh. a, she's a church goer, and she was in the background. And uh, Reverend Lovejoy was talking to someone about their sex life failing, and and he, he I don't know who he was talking to, and said. He was trying to raise Cain, but he wasn't able. And even then, started laughing. In the background. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh. Oh. And I just yeah. thought, oh, this is awkward. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. If you don't laugh, you cry. That's yeah, that's right. right. So, that's brilliant. What about your your real estate life, Jim? Are you are you into real estate? You sort of just deal with what you deal. No, no. nothing. My wife's sort of... a builder and she develops real estate. I'm not that yeah. keen on it. Look, I, I can I back I back a Jim's I buy a Jim's regional franchise. It returns twenty five percent per annum plus CPI plus capital gain. I mean, what property yep. investment is going to be called that? Yeah. You, you invest in, you you work on what you know. Yeah. I never yep. invest in anybody else. I know what I do. What we do is really really we understand what we do. Yeah. And yep. it's working very very well. Yeah. The biggest mistake, a lot of the biggest mistakes I made is trying to do things I don't understand too well, like yep. launching a psychology institute, which just cost me a heap of money. In the yep. end, it's sort of okay, but um, a factory, for example. Yeah. Um, health clubs we did at one stage. If you don't understand something, don't do it. Yep. W- work with what you know. Yep. But you've got to get to those boundaries to know what you do and don't know and where you're comfortable. And yeah. I guess, that, uh, have there been many franchises or do you do all the data and know the unserviced leads before you jump into some of those uh, franchises? Which division works has nothing to do with the division. Yep. It has everything to do with the person driving it. Yep. Mm. Yep. Now, pick an example. Dogwash started off, we got... Going fairly early, was one of the earliest companies. We got to about 60 franchisees. I put a guy in charge who was a divisional, as a divisional franchisor, yep. and he was, look, the loveliest guy in the world. He was really colourful. He used to come to national conferences dressed like Priscilla Quinn, yeah. you know, that kind of stuff in yeah. drag. Yeah. He was a lovely guy, but he was a hopeless leader. Yeah. Dropped the division down to 30, and his other rivals went past us. I then basically brought it back off him. And then went, built it up to 60, and then they gave it to a lady called Sharon Connell. Yep. And Sharon Connell was a great cleaning. She started the cleaning franchise. He became a franchisor. She's brilliant. We've now got 220 or something like that. And yeah. it's just booming ahead. It's really yep. growing fast. He's also launched Pet Patrol. What's the difference? Well, that she's a great leader. Yeah. And if you look at the divisions that have worked, they've all had great leaders. People like Paul Comfort, Building Inspections, or Brett Blair in Pool Care. If you've got a great person in charge, you can do almost anything. Yep, yep. What are the tangibles in a great leader that you'll you're find generally? But basically obsessive about improving. Yeah. Every day looking at what they're doing. Look, the, the key difference between the people, we have a division in gyms between what we call gold, bronze, and lead. And it's one thing. It's how you look at the what's going on in the company. If you're a gold, which is a, like a leader, a top franchise or someone... You're looking at saying, what can I do different? How can I improve? How can I change? A bronze will sort of listen to a leadership. If you give them advice, they'll listen to you. A lead's the sort of person that says, anything that's going wrong is not my fault. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I blame the client. I blame the system. Blame anybody else. I'm the only person that can never do anything wrong. Yeah. It's that one attitude. How much do you look at yourself or yeah. how much do you blame other people? Mm. And you've got to self-audit and you've got to yeah, yes. look within. and You've got to be humble too. I believe yeah. humility is one of the most underrated virtues yeah. in, in, in business and in life. And I often think of Jesus washing his disciples' feet, which if you, if you yep. think about it, it's an extraordinary story because washing the feet was something that was very demeaning because people were filthy because yeah. they used to have sandals and walk on dirt roads and stuff. It was something that only a slave would do. Now, occasionally a very revered rabbi 
his, his disciples would wash his feet as a sign of reverence. But Jesus did it to his disciples. Yeah. And that whole idea of service is so powerful. Yeah. And I think it's the absolute core of what we do in gyms. We say, we're not the boss. I'm not the boss of my franchisees. They're my clients. Yeah. I've got to look after them. You're my boss. That's what I tell them at training. You're in charge, not me. I listen to a few self, you know, self growth um, podcasts and that sort of thing. Oh, sorry, you that's, that's, that's my live. That's my live ring. <laughs> 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 that is a villainous sort of ring, <laughs> too, isn't it? Um, so, <coughs> in, in terms of that, it's and it's interesting looking back at leaders over over history and and the skill set that they've got and that skill set of it's basically getting people to like you mm. and then having a group. You know, no one gets to the top by themselves. So you've got to have all those skills to be able, you know, to endear people to come in with you and, and help you and, and grow you. Like, you you haven't got here by yourself. You would have had no, some people around no. you help over time. Look, I'm, and I'm probably the most incompetent person in my entire business. If you ever look at someone like Joel in terms of social media, I don't even use social media. I don't even know how to do it. Yeah. Joel does it all for me. I write stuff down as under his book, and he and he posts it and stuff, and I'll I'll do responses and stuff. But Joel does it. Or look at uh, my my um, CFO, Cynthia. Yeah. I mean, she's amazing in terms of the, of her focus on her ability to get things done. I I, I, I can I can barely read a spreadsheet. I can, but I, I struggle. <laughs> yeah. Or Rocky, who's my divisional manager, he's fantastic. Or Megan, who runs who runs what we call Jim's Plus, where we sell surplus jobs, or Charlene, yeah. who runs the call centre. All these people are street streets better than me yeah. at what they do. I'm basically, I just sort of wander around and chat to people and try and, the only thing I've got is I'm, I'm always coming with ideas. Yeah. So I'll have a discussion, I'll come down with Rocky and, we'll, and, and Joel in the evening and, we'll, and we'll, we'll, we'll talk about stuff and come up with an idea. And then, but, but he's the one who's going to do it, yeah. not me. And it's very interesting you say that because it's exactly what we're going through at the moment. So... A year, year and a half ago, I was laying on my couch um, and just had my own business by myself at home. And then we progressed into having an office, having a couple of staff members. And right now, it's that I, I'm a, I was a control freak and I wanted to run everything. But you can't because yeah. you're ceiling just you know, headbutting. So now it's the giving up to different people and, and being okay with that. And, and you would have got there at probably the age of 16 when you started <laughs> selling off franchises. But... Um, not quite that early. <laughs> <laughs> but you've got to. With, with growth comes that, that ability, the trust within other people around you, but having the right people around. You know, it actually helps not being, not being very confident. Because yep. if, you're not, if, you, if you think you can do it, if you're the best at everything, then you'll do everything. Yeah. yeah. But if you're not very good at doing most things, then you have to find people who are better than you. Yep. And you recognise that and you appreciate them and reward them yeah. accordingly. And listen to them too. I I'm great believe in listening to people. If I, somebody says something, I have to think carefully before I say no to it. Yep. Because, I mean, that's your area of enterprise, and, and I don't want to discourage that. Yeah. Thing. yeah. So it's good. Mm. When they look at um, st students and American, American college students and try to work out who's most successful, it's very rarely the top students. Yeah. The top students yeah. tend to go on to become expensive, you know, lawyers or financial people like that. But it's the middling students who actually yeah. go on to build the great businesses because they're the ones who actually say, well, I'm not so good at this, but let me find you and let me find yeah. you and let me find you. Mm. I think that's sort of happening at the moment is that not that reliance upon getting the best score at VC and then having, you know, the traditional university degree and then going on because a lot of people by the time they're in their early 20s are already on their way and you sort of just got to forge your way. And as you said, it's that internal drive of someone that is what makes the success, not what they do. So yeah. I, the value of education is grossly overestimated in my view. Yeah. There's a wonderful book called The Case Against Education. I can't remember the writer, but it talks basically suggests that the only real value of education is it gives you a parchment. It gives you a, something that gets you a, an, an interview with a job, which you yep. otherwise wouldn't get. You don't actually yep. learn very much relevant to... The, all you've done is shown you've got the ability and the discipline to actually endure several years of tertiary education. Yeah, Apart that skill set. Yeah. Pretty useless. But I mean, you look at someone like Dan Carl, one of our top franchise always now. He's getting amazing results. This is a guy who dropped out of school about the age of 15. Yeah. yeah, yeah Went yeah, to work yeah. for McDonald's, other places, became a franchisee. Yeah. Buying a franchise was really scary. Became a brilliant franchisee, turning over like a, close to a million dollars a year. Yep. And then became a, one of the most successful franchise always. And yeah. he, he now teaches and stuff. And this is a guy who's like 26. Yeah. And it's uncanny how many times you hear that, that yeah. similar story. Well, he's got great systems in place, Dan. I've, I've listened to him. Um, yeah. A few of his training se or sessions where he's been a trainer, and yeah, yep. he, he speaks very well. And he's he's very motivated, yeah. and he's very self-aware. 
you know. So if you look at his education, actually, it's to a large extent it's McDonald's and and what he's learnt with us. Yeah, yeah, with the whole group training uh, yeah. concept. So he, he t- took that from McDonald's and made it work in his own yep. franchise. And yeah, he had a pathway, I suppose, yeah. for the, which motivated these employees. Yeah, I think so. it's a pity people are so focused on tertiary education. A lot of yep. people, especially boys, are not suited to sitting at a desk. They're not very good at it. There's a wonderful book called. Um, the Millionaire Next Door, which yep. is which is about American millionaires. And people think they're sort of like tech gurus and lawyers and stuff, but the typical American millionaire is more like me, actually. They're somebody who's got a service business and yep. they've grown it and developed it. And yep. and they don't tend to live, spend a lot, which I don't either. Until recently, I drove a $10,000 car. This is a guy who's... Was it a Volvo? No, it's a Mitsubishi, my ah. latest car. Yeah, yeah, I gave it to one of my kids, actually. Yeah. Just got a new baby. I've now got a new car. My first time in my whole life I've ever got myself a new car because I won the electric. Yeah, right. Yeah. What'd you get? Tesla? No, I got. No. I, I tried. They didn't like the autopilot. I've got a uh, Volvo. Yes. Similar uh, to my wife's oh, yeah. car. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Yep, it's yep. really good, actually. I love having an electric car. You just plug it in. No petrol station. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That's amazing. It's, um, electric cars. I had a choice. I was an auto electrician before I started real estate, and I had a choice to do an electric car course. It was just as I was getting out of it, though. And there's a fair bit into it. There's so much going on. Yeah. Do you need oh. any brake lights out that Eli can help with? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, on the way out. Yeah. You don't want Dom's help. Oh, that's a brilliant idea. Yeah. I actually, I actually <laughs> have a, got solar panels on the house. I just plug it in. Yep. And I only charge during the daytime. when. So it's basically it's the sun's charging. My, my, yeah. I, I love that. Yeah. Well, in my previous life, I did have a, uh, a a new division idea that I did run by Joel, but he, he canned it pretty quick, and that was Jim's funeral. So that that was that was my no, idea. We do, we do Jim's funerals. Yeah, that, that was that well, was my go. idea initially. <laughs> I raised it five years ago. So yeah, <laughs> raised no, it all. No, no, we, we, we no. Do, funerals yeah. is good actually. Funerals yeah. is not bad. You don't yeah. have to have a, a, a party. You have to make it a mobile. That's suit. right. No, you, that's that's what it was. Going basically. Out of business yeah. Yeah. Time about, about, just about a few weeks back. About Jim's I'll help you refine it if need be. <laughs> but like all those little ideas that people come up with, is that basically, you seem to be very forward thinking, so you must have just ideas exploding all the yeah, time. Yeah, I do, all the time. But new divisions are easy to think of. What's yeah. hard is good people to drive them. Yeah. Yeah. Like I said before, the divisions that work aren't the best ideas, they're the best divisions. Oh, what? See, test and tag. I didn't even know it was a business. Yeah. It's got 220 <laughs> franchises. It's like a third biggest division. Yeah. I would test and tag me because they had great leadership. Yeah. Whereas something like Pest Control, for example, which should be 10 times as big, has got like 60 franchises. It's not bad. Yeah. 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 But, but why? But you, could, you should have 6,000. I mean, really. And leadership. That's the exciting part about life, I think, is that, you, and, and with that one, two, and five year goal that we sort of set, you get to two years and you look back and you go, didn't see I'd, we, that we'd be here. So that, what's around that next corner? Who knows? And sort of evolving with these different franchises, who knows what's next? I find it very difficult to, to predict anything. Yeah, yeah. Everything is always changing so fast. You're always learning new stuff. Things that you think are brilliant ideas are actually pathetic. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> some, some little thing that you, you think is, is, is just uh, comes out to be brilliant. There's a wonderful book by Mark Randolph about the early days. It's called That Will Never Work, about the early days of Netflix. I've just finished it. Yeah, it's yeah. one of the best written business books ever. And, and what's so striking about it is, is the informality. Like they had this thing of renting out DVDs. Yeah, and, yeah, and they didn't yeah, even, actually yeah. when they still got this idea, they didn't even know what a DVD. They never seen a DVD. They actually posted a CD through the mail to see to check on the on the, how that would work. <laughs> yeah. But they had this idea, and it was so obviously failing. It was costing yep. them far far more to to attract a client, and people weren't rebooking and stuff. Yep. And then they were just doing this, and it was obviously headed for the rocks. Yeah. You yeah, looked yeah. at it from the point of view of how could this thing possibly succeed. And then they said, oh, well, what about the idea of a subscription? Yeah. Oh, that's probably not, not, that won't work. Yeah, but uh, give it a try. Pow! Yeah. Suddenly yeah. it works. Subscription yeah. Yeah. everywhere now, isn't it? Yeah, that's oh, right. that's right. It's in the but it was really, just, they didn't yeah. even think it was, a, it was sort of something to try. It was just a little experimental idea that turned a failing, complete, obvious failing business. Yeah. You yeah. know, his mother gave him like $25,000, basically as a gift. Now, she actually got it back 100 times over when yeah. it went public, so she didn't yeah. really <laughs> But she never expected to see it again. Yeah. Because because it wasn't expected to work, but just one little tiny idea that doesn't seem very good somehow. Everything's brilliant. Speaking of Netflix, how about the Royals? How do you feel about the Royals? You, do you follow them at all? Or no, no, I do actually. I'm a... <laughs> 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 I 
Oh, I think like most people, I think I think Harry and Megan are pathetic. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, we were really, talking about that really on the way up. Bug me, they're whining. Oh, I'm so hard done by life. It's yeah. so difficult. I've got a hundred million. Oh, I'm so poor. I hate the press. And then they go and search out the press. I think they're yeah. pathetic. Yeah. Well, that yeah. was on the radio. They were on the radio being interviewed before, and I turned it yeah. off. Yeah, I stand it. Oh, I not stand it. They yeah. really, really bug me. I haven't really lived in that. Real now, world now I tell you what, the Queen was a great lady. Yes, I really admired her. Her self discipline. Her just she's a she's a terrific icon of duty. Yeah. Stalwart. A wonderful person. And I think I think um, I've got a lot of time for um, what's it, William, William and Kate. Yeah, I think yeah. They're, they're great. They're very responsible. Now, having said that, I'm an ardent Republican. I, yes. I think it's ridiculous to have a pommy yeah. head of state, a pommy aristocrat as our head of state. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, when are they coming out next? When's Charles coming out? He, uh, never. Do you think he knows. talks about us or even knows that we exist? Oh, he does. He's really different to school here. Well, yeah. my grandfather was great friends with Bill Roycroft, and uh, Charles used to spend a lot of time with Bill during the school holidays. Yeah, right. Because he yeah, knew the Queen during, yeah, due to the equestrian. So. Yeah. I have yeah. a lot of respect for Charles, though, yeah. honestly speaking. I mean, I know he, he, he's, always, he's always talking about the, the greening of the environment. Everybody should cut back and yeah. stuff. This is a guy who has five magnificent stately homes and he flies yeah. his family to holidays on a private jet. Yeah, you, you, you plebs should all... Yeah. <laughs> you should control your spending yeah. because, you know, you're, you're, you're living on you know, 50000 a year, and you've got to really cut back. And yeah. me, oh, no, no, I'm too important. I, I can just preach about it. I don't have to do anything. And That's it's a... sort of that nature and nurture, isn't it, a little bit? like yeah. the, you, it's, it's easy for us to sort of think, oh, you know, you don't know what it's like. But they being in that uh, environment where you don't know what it's like to be us is probably yeah, similar, well, that's right. you know. Yeah. Like they, they probably don't know how to, you know, tie up their own shoelaces or wash their clothes. Yeah, and right. It's mm. probably just a completely different fabricated life. Yeah. So. It's a ridiculous idea, really, having a hereditary head of state. I mean, oh, yeah. It is. Mm. Yep. And that doesn't mean I don't admire. I, I really did admire the Queen. I thought she was a great lady. Yeah. But did you watch The, the Crown? Time, yeah, I do. Yes. We're looking forward to the, the latest episodes just coming up now. I haven't seen that one yet. No, no. But, uh, um, yeah, so it's, it's fa- look, it's fascinating stuff. It's a great story. And it's a yep. great series, too, yep. actually. The whole thing is, is beautifully done. Quite questionable in a lot of the details, of course. But yeah. yeah. What about other royal families within sort of history that you follow in terms of different countries? Anyone? Or they're the, well, probably because they're in charge of us. That's the one that we follow a lot. Mm. But well, I'm, I'm very interested in Chinese history. Yes. And that's fascinating about the, the dynasties. I mean, I've always felt that the most successful people in history are not those who were great for themselves, but who found the dynasty, like Liu Bang, who founded the Chinese Han dynasty. Yep. And this is a guy who's a peasant. Yep. So when, the, when the, um, the first Chinese empire started falling apart in rebellion, he was leading a group of workers to the capital. Yep. And he was being delayed by floods. And he knew that if he got there because they had really severe punishments, he would be killed yep. because they were so harsh. And so he decided to rebel. So this peasant launched this rebellion and he becomes the emperor of China. Yeah, yeah. And, his, and his descendants rule China for 400, 400 years. I mean, this is... And that's a more moment. relatable story for... The common man, isn't it? You know, the peasant to the you know the top. I, so. ad- I admire the dynastic founders. Actually, I think that's a great thing. It's not just a matter of, of individuals. It's an achievement. It's your family. Yeah. What comes after you? Your achievement in life is more to do with your kids than to do with yourself. Yeah, that's one of my questions. Your thoughts on afterlife? Is there an afterlife? Is it just in the in the dirt? Well, as a Christian, I, I, I need to accept that Jesus certainly thought there was, so yeah. yep. I'll take his word for it. But yep. I, I have to say, I don't find it particularly attractive. I mean, for heaven's no. sake. <laughs> I, I'm afraid of death all the time. I think about it all the time. Yeah, and I, yeah I do. Yeah. I do. And I just, I just don't want to die. Look, in heaven, I, you're not supposed to be married. Yeah. So, I mean, what, what are you, no sex? I mean, what, <laughs> I mean no family? <laughs> yeah. What sort of life is that? To, to me, to me... To me, paradise is, is married to a woman you love, yeah. to yep. having great kids, to having a great life. That's paradise. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Well, we'll just, yeah. And, I, and we'll I've been living paradise longer. for the last 21 years since I met Lee. So there you are. I, I don't think anything uh, really could compare with that. Yeah. As I said, I take love Jesus' that word philosophy. for it. Just yeah. having like, you know, you live in your paradise right now. Yeah. That's right. Don't yeah. try and uh, get there wherever. Just yeah. live in it as we yeah. are. Just wake up and... And life can, life. Be, can be wonderful. It really can. I'm a really, really happy person. Yep. And there's it's, it's a way of doing it. You have a job that you love. You're healthy. You exercise. You control your weight. You have good social relations. You, you, you have a sense of purpose in, in, in what you're about. This, mm. is, this is happiness. That's, yeah. that's a healthy, happy life.
And do you mm. really try to control your balance in terms of that? In terms of, do you have a, a structured day where, yes, you exercise, there's work, there's family, there's... Uh, or is it just whatever comes? It's all mixed up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, don't, I don't work, I, you know, in the afternoon I can go and have a nap if I want to, but I might be answering emails at 2.30 in the morning. It's yeah, just, right. Yeah. Yeah. I just, just when it happens. I, yeah. I, don't, I don't like taking time off to... But, but taking time... Like, like, when I, if, like I, I drive my son to school, he's yeah. like 13 years old, and pick him up in the afternoon most yeah. days yeah. in school time. That's, to me, a very precious time of day. Oh, it is. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 If I was working 9 to 5 in the office in, in, a, in a city, I couldn't do that. But to me, that time that we spend together yeah. and the relationship we have and the fun we have is yeah. just priceless. You never get it back, too. So. One of the greatest things, too, when I talk to franchisees about, especially my 10-year veterans and so forth, what was the difference? You know, the biggest thing they say, some of them say I've made a lot more money. Some of them say I've got my financial situation. That's great. But the most common thing is they say, I've seen my kids growing up. Yeah. yeah. The one thing yeah. they say. And, and there's a wonderful saying, this is no other... No other success can compensate for failure in the home. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. I, and I totally believe that. Making a whole lot of money, becoming famous, becoming rich is worthless. It's meaningless if, you're, if your family life is, has been destroyed. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Strong words. We usually put that, we usually put that, that <laughs> you know, family always at the top. Yeah. And work other things after that, but yeah. I love that philosophy. But you can have a blend with yeah, absolutely. Money, money has a lot less to do with happiness than people think. I'm very interested yeah. in the subject of money. For example, yeah. you know, one kind of spending has almost no relationship to happiness. It's spending yeah. on stuff. Yeah, you're Is having a, a better car, having a dopamine exactly, yeah. having a better car, a bigger house. These things have zero relationship to happiness. More happiness is more achieved by spending on, on experiences. Yeah. Yep. Like when I take my kids out to, to meals, I, I try and see all my kids regularly, um, which is, well, there's a lot of them. So <laughs> <laughs> it's a very active social. Yeah. Yeah. Do, once every do you month have a favourite? Yeah. Oh, I love all my kids. <laughs> <laughs> well done. How would you ask me? <laughs> <laughs> very, very, very well done. But, that's, but that's, that's better. That's better, the experiences. But yeah. You know, the best, best way, this is, this is not... This is not Preaching, this is, this is scientific research, the best way to spend money is to give it to a cause that you are personally involved in. Like yep. my research, for example. Yes. Yes. That is the number one thing, best thing you can do with money is to give it away. But be involved yes. in it. Yeah, yeah. 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 Honestly. Yep. yep. And in terms of, do you do sponsorships and that sort of thing as well? Or? No, I, I have one charity. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Look, I, that's the, your outlet. Bill Gates, <laughs> my most admired person in the whole world is Bill Gates. Now, as a businessman, he was, he was great, obviously. But the Gates Foundation, to me, is one of the greatest things ever being done. Yep. This guy has probably saved millions of lives. Yep. He's an extraordinary man. He's developed all his amazing intelligence, his drive, to looking at how can I spend my money in the way that will have the biggest impact on the most people. Yep. He's yep. extraordinary. And not only has he done it himself, but he's influenced others to do it, like, like Warren Buffett do the same thing, the yep. billionaire's pledge. This is, this is my man of the century, yeah. Bill Gates. Now, I have the same principle. Basically speaking, I have two ways to spend, give money away. One of them is tithing, because that's a, a, you know, it's a Christian obligation, and the other is that, my research. Yeah. And if yeah. I've got more money, I'll spend it on research. If yeah. my company's ever worth a billion dollars, which it may be one day, it'll be funding that research. That's yep. what it's yeah. for. Fantastic. And how long has that research been going now? Well, about 10 years, actually, since we started doing some yep. very small stuff. Yep. But and it's really ramping up lately. I've got some terrific yeah. results lately. We've done methylation studies and all kinds of things. We're getting some fantastic results. Yeah, yeah, yeah fantastic. We're and trying a whole lot of different approaches. With yeah. technology moving forward in that as well, does your research have to keep adapting with that? Well, yeah, well, the technology is great. Yeah. yeah. Like, like CRISPR, for example. This, this, is, this is wonderful, wonderful technology. There's, there's, a, there's a book by um, oh, what's the, Jennifer Doudna, the one who won the Nobel Prize, too. Yeah. So it's a great book about CRISPR and how, they dis how she discovered it. And, 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 and making use of it. That's a fantastic technology. Yeah. CRISPR can be used to go in and change individual genes. Yeah, yeah. really. But yeah. more important from our point of view, it can actually target the actual genome. It can turn off methylation, turn off that gene, turn on that gene. Yeah. Change the character any way possible. Now, the problem at the moment is that it's not specific enough. It's not guided enough. So you can turn off this gene like that, and this yeah. one over here gets turned off, and it has a different effect. So at the moment, the technology is rare. But within the next decade, it will be to the stage we can go in and we can specifically tailor the genome, yep. which means that we could actually turn, change character any way we wanted. We could have somebody who's a drug addict and they could become an adaptive, productive, happy citizen. Yep. Basically, you know, within a few weeks. Yeah, really, yeah. 
and, yeah. and poverty, all these things could be solved once we understand this. So this is amazing technology. And that all depends on, on um, AI. It's the computer revolution that's made yeah. it possible. Yeah. And what about sort of world population and, and growth and where everything's going? Like, it, you know, food shortages and, and that sort of thing. Well, actually, by, by any objective sense, the world's better than it ever has been. Yeah. If you look at the first two decades of the 21st century, yep. when also we had a you know, higher life expectancy, less yep. children in poverty, less kids dying of disease and so forth, it's been an amazing period. I think the problem is our civilization is in decline as it is now. But yeah. we, that's easy to reverse if you understand the science. Yeah, 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 yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. But um, in terms of, well, actually the world population is about to, about to um, plateau and then, and then start dropping because the birth rate is below replacement level in a lot of countries, including Australia. Yeah, right. right. Yep. Which, yeah, right. which to me is a sign of a problem because if you don't have enough, any society that doesn't even want to replace itself has yep. got no long-term future. Yeah. And do you think that's a, a monetary sort of thing where you no, can't afford it? Or, it's, yeah, it's, psychological. it's very characteristic yep. of a wealthy urban civilization. Yes. And there's reasons which are described in this book because the desire for children has to do, in a certain limited sense, with, with this factor to do with limited food restriction. Yeah. The, 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 the zoology is weird, actually, but, our, yeah, we're, we're losing... We have a certain kind of character that's been developed in, in, yeah. in advanced cultures that is hard-working, disciplined, form large states, all these yeah. kinds of things like that. Under the pressure of wealth and urbanisation, we are losing it. And yeah. part of that we're losing is the desire to have children. People are less interested in children. S Self-absorbed, happy to look after myself. Yeah. Yeah. Look, it's, it's all psychology. And yeah. why have I got ten children? Because yeah, I, I was about to say Because it. I adore children. I yeah. love children. They'll do studies to show that a person with children is less happy than somebody without, which seems to be on average the case. With me, absolutely the opposite. I adore children. Really? Kids. I really, really enjoy children around. It's been the greatest, one of the greatest joys of so, my whole life. Is that study done by someone that doesn't have kids? No, it's done by scientists. <laughs> they, actually yeah. at, they actually measure levels of happiness, and they do find people with kids are a little bit less happy overall. They're right. That's why people don't have a lot of kids, because they don't really enjoy kids enough. But yeah. if you look at someone like Charles Darwin back in the 19th century, he yeah. had the same attitude as me. He loved his kids. Yeah. And, and people at those days saw home as a haven. Yeah. So it wasn't just the fact that they didn't know about contraception. They really enjoyed their children. Yeah. 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 Oh. And that's what we're losing. If yeah. people don't want to have kids enough to replace themselves, we've got no future. Yeah, yeah. Oh, absolutely. It's a pretty simple math, isn't it? So. Well, look at the birth Get busy, rate. boys. <laughs> hey. Yeah, how many kids have you guys got? Uh, I've got three. Well, One. A, one. Three. Yeah. Well, you're not so, doing too bad. Yeah, we're, <laughs> only, we're only young. I'm under yeah. pressure to have a fourth, but yeah. just... Yeah, do it. I do. Right. It. I will. I will. <laughs> Jenny heard that here first. Yeah. <laughs> I, I reckon do it. It's fantastic. Yeah. It's yeah. so much fun having. Kids. But I, lo I love being with the boys. I really do. I enjoy their development. I am. It's it's harder in some respects, but you do enjoy your life a little bit more. It's certainly more fulfilled. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. absolutely. And you definitely appreciate your partner, don't you? And even yeah, when they grow up, yeah. they're still a big asset. I love seeing my kids. I like yeah. visiting them. I, I, I have I have wonderful just my, my, my children, their 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 partners and so forth. Yep. I get on so well with them and they How many grandkids? Thirty two. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. My children are very bad breeders. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't have my first kid until I was 30, 32 or something like that. So yeah, it was right, a bit eh? late to get started. It's a bit of practice. <laughs> but this, this, what's life about? I mean, I, yeah. I get to the end of my life and say, well, I had a lot of fun, I had a lot of alcohol, I had a lot of enjoyment. What does that mean? Yeah. Mm. You're lying in your bed and you're thinking, what have I achieved? Well, I've, I've enjoyed myself, I had a lot of nice meals. I mean, big deal, yeah. come on. Yeah. But I've produced something worthwhile, I've done something, I've yeah. produced a business, I've produced something to do with scientific research, I've, and my kids. Yeah. Your kids are part of your achievement, kind of your purpose in life. Yeah, that's my sort of life goal is, and motto is to, and, and from my parents to me to the mm. next generation is to leave your offspring in a better position than you found yourself, you know. Yeah. So mum and dad come from not much, but I was given a little bit, but then you hope that the next one's given a little bit more. And, and What you and so still want to give is character. Yeah. See, the interesting thing about my kids, especially when the, the younger ones are growing up, we were actually quite wealthy. You yep. know, we've got a multi-million yep. dollar annual income, but, but they don't, we don't live like that. We never have. Yep. They yep. actually theoretically know that we're rich, but they see the, the mansions and the expensive cars and overseas trips and stuff, and there's yeah. nothing like our lifestyle. Yeah. Dad drives his beat-up old car, which never gets washed and stuff. It's just... They haven't been brought up in privilege, but they're great kids. They've got their discipline. They're good with money. Yeah. They control. They're all good savers. They, they don't. Yeah. That's that's more important. Wealth is 
destructive. See, one benefit yeah. you guys, you're both all from Warner Bros, that right? Yeah. 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 That's a positive thing too. Yeah. Because the more you're away from the big city, the yeah. less this corrupting influence is it. Yeah. It's yeah. the wealth, it's the density of population that causes problems. Oh, we don't like being here, but... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we like being here stuff. in this You're, pretty, you're pretty rude about that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You could have helicoptered in. You, you in as our guest. <laughs> 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 No, we do, we do appreciate it. Yeah. Too. Thank you very much for giving us a... Country town is good, actually. Time. From a social point of view, I'd rather live in a country town. Yeah. From, from, the, from, the, from the point of view of business, it's not so convenient. Well, yeah, it's well. interesting. We spoke about this on the way up, and we sort of we drove into Melbourne, and we, if we were real estate agents in Melbourne, we would have to work in a completely different method than we do because yeah. we re rely on you know, the good name and referral and friends yes. and family and, and doing a good job and it gets around, whereas I just don't know if that would work up here. It'd be a bit more cutthroat, but that, that's us not knowing. But we, we love where we live and we've all yeah. sort of lived away and, and come back. And well, reputation is the, is the core of any decent business, that's right, I think, yeah. in the city or in the country. But I do think, I do think a, a, a more rural lifestyle is healthier. Yeah. It's, it's more, it's more community-based, it's more, it's more personal. You'll need a little farm down there then, maybe. Oh, my us. farm's up the other direction. <laughs> yeah. I go there go quite the often. Way. I'm yeah. heading up there this afternoon, actually, so it's a half-hour drive. That's, that's, yeah. that's great for that's me. That's enough. Half yeah. an hour everywhere in Melbourne, though. It's only, this is it's only five Melbourne minutes city. everywhere in Warrnambool. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, went to, I went to visit my son lives in Deer Park, and that was like an hour and hour and 20 minutes to get there. That's like, oh. like a, oh, that's so far. Yeah. And especially if you don't sort of go many places, like no. you probably hate being in the car, do you? I, I, find no, I don't mind. I've got a talking books. I listen on yeah, all yeah. the time. I never, I never waste the time. I, I have there's wonderful, wonderful books around. I read so many great books all the time. Yeah, and that keeps so that, it's never wasted. How long did this one take to to write? Well, that one's a sort of update of an early one, but you know, it, yep. it took. But it, and which is also an in turn update of my PhD thesis, which is an update of my honours thesis. So it kind of gradually yep. got written over the years. Yep. I don't know. Probably a. A couple of years on, on yep. and off. Yeah, and a bit of help there, obviously. And a bit of help. Well. My son, I've got one son who's actually invested in this, who believes in it. Yeah, yeah yep, yep. And he'll be shortly starting a PhD in neuroscience, so it's great. Yeah, beautiful. Wow. What about, I had a question earlier, the longest serving Jim's employee? Employee? Yeah. I think um, Stuart would be about the longest, wouldn't he? He was, yeah. our, he was our first ever IT guy. That was He must have been around about, what, 25 years? 25. <laughs> Yeah, right. Eh? It's yeah. amazing, isn't it? It's good in quarter of a century. Absolutely, mm. it is it's good. I, look, I take pride in it actually. Yeah. As you should. I've had problems at the senior level. I've had very difficulty finding good people at that level until quite recently with Rocky and Joel and Cynthia. But um, we, we do tend to have very low attrition. Yeah. yeah. But I, but I, that's it, that's very important too. To me, I, I find the idea that the business is only run for the sake of the shareholders, or in this case, yeah. it's only one, is obscene. Yep. A business has responsibilities to everybody, yep. but most of all to their staff. Yep. And in my case, which obviously includes franchisees, um, but also the community itself. The owner is just one of those. And, and I, I take a lot of... I spend a lot of my time actually trying to work out whether people are happy. Now, it's franchisees. Yep. But I, I wander around most offices pretty well every day, just chat to people. Yep. How are you getting on? What's going? Yep. You've been looked after. Even the in the... Conference center, you know, how you're finding things, are people treating you well, this kind of stuff. Always want to know. And then we do things like staff lunches, for example, and then the sporting yep. complex, which is partly for the conference center, but also for the staff too. Yep. I want my staff yep. to be healthy. Yep. And then we provide fresh fruit. Yep. So we try and keep the chocolates away. So we, <laughs> I mean, encourage them to keep fit and so forth. I think that, that's, that's just so important. Yeah. And to me, the success of any business, one of the best indications is the, is the longevity of the staff. Yep. The staff stay with you. Yeah, certainly. Yeah. And that's one huge. of the the mind blowing things of being here today is the how it all operates over there and it's all open plan and everyone's in there together and, and your office and, and I love that transparency and and empowering your staff to you know, you you're not up in the you know, the glass tower up there and locked away. You are oh, down here with it's the, very accessible. Yeah. A bit yeah. like our office, we're about this far apart <laughs> yeah. from each other. Bigger than this, but, but um but I oh, see, the four uh, arrangements are great. That's one thing we missed during COVID. I used to come down. I, I love to come down in the evening. Usually about 5.30, I chat with Joel and Rocky and it's just about everything. We come up with ideas and, and, and sometimes this conversation is just about nothing to do with business, but yep. often it just relates that way. But that's where those ideas probably yeah. are, are born. You know, it's, not, right. it's, it's not a think tank where you're stuck in a room and you have to think. Creativity comes from all types of Business angles. is really, really fun. 
Yeah. It's, it's, it's more fun than you could possibly imagine. People yeah. ask me how many hours a week I work, and I say, well, I'm not quite sure, really, because it's so <laughs> spread out. But I said, if, if by work you mean something that you do for money rather than for sheer fun of it, I stopped working probably 20 years ago. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's just a lifestyle now. And, and I love the part that you're empowering all of your workers. You know? and, and the way that that's set to. up is that if, if they go better, you go better. But it's yeah. not, you know, they're not captives if you know what I mean. So. The, thing, the thing that's very characteristic I find is that, is that people are very engaged. They believe in what they're doing. Yep. I think it's having a sense of purpose is important. We know we serve our franchisees more than anything. There's nearly 5,000 families out there dependent on us. What we do makes a huge difference to them. Mm. Yeah. And I think people feel that sense of mission. It's not just about making Jim rich because they know anyway the money I've got goes there. Yep, yep. And that transparency is fantastic. And no one else is going to say that similar mm. thing to yourself. And the, people often ask me, you know, what... If, I, if I'm proud of having so many franchisees, and I said, there's one thing really that makes me the most proud is when I see French, my people living up to the values that I have. We had a guy, for example, who came from the UK to, do, to go to a national conference, and he'd been involved in franchising for two decades mm. yep. and, and, and had contact with dozens of different franchise systems. And he said, what I saw with your people is different from anything I've ever seen before. And it's this attitude that we care about franchisees, yeah. that we serve them. And you want them to buy in. And they obviously yes. have that ownership and they, they want to be there. And, and you know, especially over that last couple of years where every industry is really struggling for workers, um, whereas your attrition rate is still there. You know, you're still growing. Yeah, well, we, we still lose too many. Yeah. <laughs> we are endlessly thinking of ways to try and reduce attrition. What extra can we do? What recognition, what rewards, what certificates, yeah. what bonuses, like everything we can possibly think of. It's a yeah. constant, constant topic. How do you make people want to be part of this community and stay with us? Because yeah. the trouble is a lot of them, when we lose them, it's, it's not so much that they, some of them do fail. Some of them get offered another job, but some of them actually go independent, which mm. is possible. It only costs a few thousand dollars and they can go. Now, we want, we want to give them the reason to stay. Now, most people yep. actually do stay with us. They don't go independent. But we, we want to give them more reason not to want to leave. And do you get many that come back from being, being independent back under the umbrella, or is that sort of yeah, not Yeah, a, we not do, actually. Option. We do, actually. One of the things we do is we ring people who've left and sort of invite them back. Yep, um, yep. We had one guy who went to one of our competitors. I won't say who. And... <laughs> And then after a few months, he very sheepishly get back. Can we come back? Yeah. Because <laughs> he dropped from about seven thousand dollars a week down to fifteen hundred dollars a week because he wasn't yep. getting any work. Yeah. There was yep. no support, so it was very embarrassing. But you know, we we love Jared. We we, we, we welcome <laughs> you back. Right? <laughs> <laughs> you did drop that. Right. Right. <laughs> I'm not going to say his surname. Yeah. No, 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 that's okay. We we get them. But little... it was a, it was a, it was a big boost. We were all we were all really really wrapped in that. We we welcomed him with open arms. <laughs> <laughs> come back. All is forgiven. Yeah. <laughs> But that must Definitely. be pretty you know, galvanising for yourself too, to know that you know, people do want to come back and it's a good workplace. Yeah, it is too. too. And even when people leave, you know, often they, it's, it's funny thing, people can leave and even if it doesn't work out for them, they often recommend people to come to us. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because they know that, that, you know, we have some negative bit of people out there, but a very small minority. Yeah. yeah. Have you got any questions for us, Jim? Anything you could think of? <laughs> Probably. Yeah. I think Reverse podcast. Yeah. 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 Why Family not? And stuff. I think you guys are going yeah. pretty well. No, nah, nah, nah. no, no. Yeah. We appreciate it, Jim. Thank you for giving us your time. I know you're a busy man, and uh, thanks, Joel, as well, for yeah. getting us down here. And um, yeah, and the whole crew. Dylan. Yeah. Dylan hasn't actually. Got that <laughs> much. Yeah. Dylan's yeah. been very excited by these cameras that are around yeah. here. And, yeah. Um, yeah. Just, just watch these fellas. They, he might. I was going to say, you got one really big political person on here, and I. On the way down, I was saying, you should ask Jim about, because there's a lot of misconceptions about the lockdown period. Like, mm. the to devastating impact. And maybe Jim can talk about the lockdown and his working with franchisees. Yeah, but... Um, how it's been good for us. Yeah, yeah. But, well, there's been a lot of sort of airplay. Yeah, yeah. Been. The villains. Oh, yes. The villain. Is that where you tried to lure me in? I know which villain you're, you know, you're yeah, meaning. But uh, anyway, it's pretty well known that you've... you've helping with a, a, a bit of a class action a, against the Victorian government. Um, mm. And how is that all playing out at the moment? Well, at the moment, we actually... What we're doing... Are you it, winning? Well, <laughs> what we're trying to do is to actually get them to admit that there was a stupid thing to do. Yep. Because, you know, you, you know what happened. Basically, they sent out the guidelines that specifically said from Health and Human Services that individual sole operators can continue to work. Which is pretty yep. sensible. How can you infect yep. anybody if you're mowing the lawns? You're not yep. talking to anybody. 
And then the Premier comes out at a news, a news conference on the, like the following week and says you can't keep your lawns mowed and your house is clean. Now, he wasn't thinking about yeah. the contractors. He was thinking about his affluent inner yeah. suburban supporters, people who like him. Yeah. Couldn't give a stuff about 100,000 plus Victorians thrown out of work for no reason. Yeah. Um, and I took exception to that and I got into a lot of trouble. Two of my daughters wouldn't even speak to me for some months oh, afterwards really? because yeah. they were so angry because I wasn't supporting the beloved Premier. Yeah. Um, interestingly enough, they both come to, come to a different viewpoint with time. But so I took a, what it was quite an unpopular stance and I kept on pushing it and I pushed it and I pushed it. And we actually got overwhelming community support. Yep. And the biggest thing I'm after, though, is that anything that happens again, and this won't be the last lockdown, yeah. we want to know that they won't do it again, that they'll yeah. look at sensible scientific responses. Now, what we've done is taken a test case against the Victorian government because their own law, passed by Andrews himself, says that you cannot deprive a person of their livelihood without proper reason. Yeah. Yeah. So now we've gone and said, OK, 100,000 plus Victorians lost their livelihood for, yep. four, for two months. What was your reason? You know what the response is? We didn't have to tell you the reason. Yeah, so in yeah. other words, the law says you have to have a reason, but the government doesn't have to give you a reason. Yes. Just trust us because we are... Now, we went to VCAP. Basically, uh, the government refused to give the emails, refused to give the evidence on that which that decision was made. We're now appealing to the Supreme Court. Yeah. And they promised a response to that, which is obviously was delayed by the election. Yep. And the... when you dumb it right... It, it... It relates to everyone. If you dumb it right down, you say that the council workers allowed to mow the grass, but the private person can't. Well, there's, there's no difference. difference. There's even no, even there's the, no the council workers said they were stupid. I had them come in to contact me and say, we support yeah. you fully. It's idiotic what, what um, we, we, we don't agree with it. Yeah. We've got overwhelming support from the community, and that's the main reason why we did it, just to yeah. hold people accountable. Because as far as they were concerned, as far as Andrews was concerned, ordinary people had no say. Ordinary workers were just garbage. Yeah. They're not going to vote for me anyway, so I don't care about well, that. Well, that's what you are saying before, and I nearly brought it up in leadership, but I, I, did, I know we have to sort of wrap things up quite shortly. But uh, we you know, were, talking about, you were talking about humility with leadership and the like. Well, yeah. as a leader, what are your thoughts on, on Andrews? Well, that, that's the point. He was a pu Look, give the guy credit. He's a brilliant political operator. Correct. He's yeah. just won election again, which considering how he's acted, the, the, the stuff up of quarantine, the, this unnecessary lockdown is amazing. Yeah. Now, he's clever. As a politician, he's very clever. One of the things that he's obviously got is you don't admit fault, you never back down. Yeah. yeah. And, and he's good at it. He does massive amounts of polling. He spends huge amounts of taxpayers' money to yeah. understand how Victorians think. He's very good at staying in power. He's a lousy, pathetic leader. Well, there's no vulnerability there with him, no. is there? When you compare the great leaders that we've had in Australia, people like Hawke and Keating and Howard, brilliant yeah. leaders who, who had courage, who did important, disciplined things to, yeah. to change society for the better. Yeah. And you compare someone like Andrews, who was just a political hack, good at staying yeah. in power, good at nothing else. And... As we were sort of saying earlier, that those leaders in the past, they're obviously good at, you know, at admiring, getting people to admire them, the, the yes. certain people, to get what they want. And whether they're the villains or the, you know, the great kings or whatever, there's certain skills there that allow them to get the right people around them. And, well, Hawke's a classic example. Want. I just read his biography too, which is yep. an amazingly unpleasant man in private life, but a great, great leader for this country. Yeah. Um, what he did was... Was, 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 he was a very relatable guy. He's the kind of guy you want to have a beer with in the pub, not while I drink beer, of course, but anyway. Yeah. He's that kind of guy. Everybody well, liked... What about a plug for Jim's beer? Well... Yeah. Lawn yeah. Lager. Yeah. Everyone Lawn else lager. can. We've got to get another batch done of this. We We've got yeah. this more... Yeah. Because my, my kids are crazy about it. They, well, they want more. No, not beer. It's very moderate. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, but, but that was great stuff. But the interesting <laughs> thing about the whole situation was that I, I, took, I took what was originally a very unpopular, very problematic stance, but it actually turned out to be very good for the company because it raised yep. our profile in a yeah, way. Yeah. And a lot of people have actually bought franchises because they saw me sticking up yep. for, for, the, for, the, for the franchisees. Not only that, but people in the industry, I get people like independent contractors who come up to me and want to shake my hand and congratulate yeah. me and thank me for what I did be I, because I actually, I actually represented them, not, yeah. not just my own franchisees. Yeah. yeah. I, I find it so interesting to, and in years to come, it'll be interesting what comes out, but to look back as a bit of a social experiment and look how it affected certain people and, and certain people, it just, like, you know, politics and religion, and it split everyone. You had people that were just dead for it, the lockdowns and that, and people dead against it. And 
a lot of those people I thought would be the other way around. Mm. And it's obviously just something in someone's personality that they've headed but that I, way. I refuse to take an extreme view too. I think Australia is too polarised. Yep. See, when it comes to reasonable things, I didn't like not being able to go to church. Yes. I really found that I missed it. But I didn't object to it. I thought it was sensible. Yeah. Yep. I, I was very, very strongly supportive of vaccination. Yep. You know, we, we run gyms, jabs, campaigns, all kinds of things, and we gave stuff away. We did everything possible to get people to vaccinate. Yep. So it, sensible, sensible precautions, yes, absolutely. Yep. Stupid, senseless, harmful ones, no. Yep. Mm. I refuse to be totally... I won't say I'm pro-Labour or pro-Liberal. I'm, yeah. I'm pretty much in the middle, actually. Yeah, yeah. But, but, I, but I, I like good policies yes. that help the most people. Yeah. Things that make sense. And I don't like the division in society that's taking place where you yeah. have to be one. People actually get onto me. They say, well, you're supposed to be on the conservative side, but, you're, but you, but you favour you know, taxing you know, carbon and stuff like that. You can't do that because that's inconsistent. I'd blow that for a life. Yeah. I, I believe what I believe. Yeah. yeah. Well, everyone's allowed to have an opinion, aren't yeah. they? And um, we, shouldn't be, we, shouldn't, we, shouldn't be, we shouldn't be plotted into, into certain areas. Yeah. I, I subscribe to four different um, publications. Two would be left of centre. Yep. One would be right of centre, which is the Australian, and one I have economists. I have no idea what they actually how you yeah. actually yeah. prescribe yeah. them. So to me, you've got to get ideas from all over. Yep. Different points of view, think about it, read different books from different points of view and just come to your own conclusion, which are totally your own. Yeah, you're right, right rather than being But, that, but that's, one, what, that's what, what, what we saw during the lockdowns was the unbalance at the Victorian um, Parliament because the upper house and lower house, they could just push everything through. So that, having that balance with, with politics all around, that, that's so important, the yin and yang. Yeah, becoming more marginal. Sort of well, no, no, it's, it's having a balance because... Yeah. That it was out of balance, and, and yeah. you could push through these extreme, uh, yeah. we'll say, laws or policies that were um, having an impact on the broader community yeah. without yeah. being checked. Yeah. And that, that was probably the issue overall. Yeah. So, I'll tell you yeah. what, I've never so much um, appreciated the free press as what happened. Yeah. You had yeah. basically an elected dictatorship in Victoria, not accountable, couldn't give a stuff about so much population. The press held, held Andrews to account, particularly yeah. the, the, the Murdoch press, obviously, and people like Sky News and so forth. Kevin Rudd's friend. Yeah, yeah. Jeez, he hates he oh. hates Rupert Murdoch, Kevin Rudd. Right. Well, people yeah. do. Yeah, yeah. But it's good to have a balance, though. Oh, that's right. Yeah. You've got yeah. your left wing press, like the what, I don't know what the Fairfax press, I don't know what they're called now, and the ABC. They're the they're the lefties and the greenies and stuff. And you've got Murdoch who gives more of the right. Yeah, yeah. it's got to balance. Definitely. And I think that's something that really sort of came up and was highlighted is that different media outlets probably suit different people's ideas and yeah. that they're not all the same. You know, there's different agendas getting pushed in different ways. And But as long as everyone understands that and you can take an objective view of it all and, you know, and, and take it The thing I find in. most offensive is that the, the thing that we all pay for, the ABC, has no has no interest in, in giving a wider... Yeah. Wide range yep. of opinions. Yes. They decided we're in the we're in the, the, the extreme woke greeny side. That's our, yep. that's our thing, and you can pay for a billion dollars a year for us to push that barrow. Yep. That's wrong. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Oh, there's nothing wrong with having a whole media outlet for the greenies, but they should pay for it. Don't ask us to pay for it. Yeah, yeah. And we're the same. And like I, I'm a you know a person that tries to stay in the middle and see both. You know, it's hmm. like life. You have to be able to see both opinions, and and if you choose one way or the other, well, at least you're educated. Correctly, rather than yeah, just barreling down one road and that's yeah, right. exactly what you said. Yeah, saying. I think I think Albanese is doing a decent enough job. I'm yep. I'm I'm not unhappy about him at all in, in terms of what they've had. So to me, it's just just who's what what is that individual person doing? Mm. What policies are they pushing for? What vision do they have? And sometimes you'll get the best leadership from different sides of politics. Would you ever run for prime minister? No. <laughs> we could have Listen, started the campaign you just, then. You yeah, just heard what I'm saying. Do you think somebody with a mouth like mine going to politics? I say what I think. Unfortunately not, because we need more people of your ilk that are happy yeah. to stand for something. It's a very hard thing, politics, though, because you do... Yeah. It's the gaff thing. You say one yeah. thing out of context or in, in a result, and, and it's completely blasted and you're crippled and crucified yeah. from then on. That's what's wrong with politics in this country, because you, you, you it's push... It's a career job. But you push all the good people away. Yeah. They... they they flourish yep. in another. No, you're, you're absolutely right. We we don't have the calibre of politicians that yep. we need because it's such an important job. But it's it's not very well paid if you look at it by comparison. What you can make in industry. Yeah. Someone like someone like um, what's it called? The prime minister Malcolm Turnbull. You know, yep. he was he was a real rich guy. He didn't yep. need to be it's a, a hobby. hobby. It's a hobby. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Politics, and I think I don't think he was too bad actually. And we see that in in local government in in Warrnambool where you know. It, 
people are so busy trying to make ends meet anyway that, the, and we know that like, even committees and, and things yeah. like that that you're involved in, it takes so much of your time. So a lot of those, yeah, as you said, the, the quality character, just look at it and go, oh, can't right. bother. And then you get the, then you get the public opprobrium of people criticising you and watching yeah. you all the time. I mean, it's a pretty thankless profession. It'd be a tough job. Yeah. yeah. I would not favour. I said that to um, my MP, who was the speaker. Um, uh, yeah. I said I wouldn't change my job for yours. No. Like Tony Smith. What yeah. would you do though? What? If you what? weren't doing what you're doing, what would you do? If I wasn't in business. Yeah. I mean, you can't imagine it. Something to do with science, I guess. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Look, politics has a certain appeal. I, I, I could be sort of like an independent senator or something like that. Yeah. Then, yeah. You, then, you, can, then you could speak out about issues that matter. Yeah. Yeah. Farmer? Maybe no, a farmer? Not, not really. Gardener. I think one of the best things you said was just being reasonable about, like, you know, like you were saying about going to church and things like that. Fair enough. If the virus is spreading, don't do that. But, like, I just think yeah. just be, to be more reasonable and more... Um, it comes down to what point, what onus is on the individual as well. If, you, yeah. if you're elderly and frail and you're poor health, well, maybe you should stay at home. But not everyone should stay at home because you don't have the self-control to pick and choose where you're yeah. going and not going. And probably that, because it was unprecedented and we hadn't seen that before. Well, it was. If it <laughs> happens... Again, Again we do, well, hopefully do it better. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. And, look, and that's all you want, to, is get, to learn to get, from To things. give the government due credit, you know, shutting down Australia as, as quickly as we did was a brilliant decision. It really yeah. was. That was the federal government. Mm. And, and you've, got, you've, got to, you've got to give it to them. They yeah. did the right thing and they were criticised a lot for it they at were. the time. Yeah. They yeah. were really blasted. You forget all that. But they did the right thing. They cut us down. They tried to put quarantine in places. They, they gave us time. And then by the time that the Omicron stuff got in, we had, we had um, vaccines, yeah. which was an extraordinary achievement. Yeah. That was absolutely unprecedented. The, the producing, you know, there was this book, um, anti uh, vaxxers It's called Vaxxers, which actually yep. described the process. This is for AstraZeneca yes. in, in Oxford. How that was done. It was like they they, they had it, they had a vaccine, a working vaccine, within a few weeks yeah. of getting the getting the um, the DNA. Did they already have it ready? That, that, that it, the rest, most of the time was just in doing tests and stuff like that. Yeah. It was an amazing achievement. Yeah, that's the thing. Like the turn that turnaround, like oh, it's just yeah. incredible. That's what, nothing Even the vaccine rollout and nothing stuff. Nothing like, like in the past. You know, it, yeah. took, it took years or decades to do vaccines in the past. They yeah. did it in weeks. And I'm a political novice, um, I'll say that. And you, you try and talk to me about it in the office and I just sort of turn around and sell another house. But um, <laughs> Well, you need, a, you, need a get, you need to take know, notice of it. You but this is what I'm about <laughs> to say. I, I didn't realise, and I probably should know this, but the federal government not having much control over Victoria. Like that, that sort of blew my mind that, that the Prime Minister wasn't it? can't really affect any change within Victoria. Like well, it, he could want whatever well, he wants. Well, it suits the Emperor down here, yeah. so that's... It's yeah. Good. yeah, he's but happy then, with But that. in a sense, though, it was, it was, it was, <laughs> there is a benefit to that too because different states had different kinds of policies. Yeah. So, for example, you look at New South Wales, which had a more sensible approach, and Victoria, which had a really ridiculously strict approach and caused yeah. a lot of suffering and real damage... The actual mortality is the same. Yeah. It made no difference. Yeah. So you, next time they look at it and they say, well, let's try the New South Wales model instead. Do you think of... he's got the humility to try the New South Wales model next time? I don't think, I think if he got it again, I don't think they do the same thing. I think they yeah. learned. I think the, yeah. the actual politics became so toxic. Yeah. Now, even though they managed to get elected, and they, goodness knows, yeah. I do not know how. Well, they got the people in the right places. Uh, preferences. Preferences. Yeah. So it was 35 yeah. 36 on the two party preferred. So Liberal yeah. would have lost anyway. But it, it was like the federal election, uh, Liberals won that on the two party preferred. And then yeah. the. Uh, Preferences got it over the line. I think so. it's a pity the Liberals couldn't get into things like carbon taxes and stuff mm. and, and adopt some of those causes more strongly. I know they're held back by coalition, but but, but really, yeah. I mean, the way, the way we handle carbon taxes is uh, greenhouse gases is really stupid. What we're doing is we're subsidising things like solar panels, mm. which is which is bad from two points of view. And yep. first of all, because it pushes up the price of electricity for everybody else, including people who can't afford solar panels. Yeah. So it's it's regressive. It actually yes. helps people who are better off, like me, because we've got solar panels everywhere, and it hurts the people who can't afford solar panels, like living in rental houses. So yep. it's regressive. Yep. It, takes, it takes from the poor and gives to the rich. And the other thing is it's extremely inefficient because a carbon tax, a really heavy carbon tax, would actually, and especially if you gave it back on a per capita basis, would be a far more efficient way of reducing emissions because then you could do anything. You could have solar panels. Yep. You could insulate your house. Yep. You could buy a coat and turn the power down. You could do all yeah, kinds of things. You've got to some choice. Give them a choice. It's a any economist will tell you that it's more efficient to use the market. Yeah. So that the systems we use now are stupid. They really are dumb. 
you want to control global warming, do it properly and do it in a way that's fair to people, especially those who are worse off. Yeah. And speaking of, how do you feel about the, the capping of the energy prices, which has just come no, out? It can't work. work. Not yeah. a good idea. Yeah. Yeah. They've tried good. this. You interfere with the market, you muck it around. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Like yeah. They're going to get it somewhere else. It's, it's but, but, yeah, yeah. But, but if they're capping the market in Australia, so more gets shipped offshore yeah, to pick yeah. up the shortfall. Yeah, That's how I see it. Then you get a shortage. Well, there should yeah, be a yeah. way of compensating the people who, who need it, which is basically people like myself don't require energy prices to be capped. That's ridiculous. Yes. Nor, yeah. nor do I'm sure to any of you. But mm. there are people who are vulnerable out there who are living on fixed incomes who really need a bit of help. So why not distribute the money back on a per capita basis? We'll get to those who need it rather than... Yeah. Everybody. The trouble like with it. all these subsidies and things, they, they, they help the people who use the most energy, which is the people who are yeah. best off. Yeah, yeah. 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 Rob and Peter, pay Paul. We, we yeah. have too much in our society, there's too much gap between the rich and the poor, and too many government policies say, like, how much money can we take from the poor and give to the rich? It's the wrong idea. Yeah, yeah. Like things like taxes, for example, okay? One of the things I'm very keen on is, is land taxes. Yep. We should move on. lots and lots and lots of our taxes onto land. Really hefty land tax, yeah. unimproved land value. What that does is people who are living in a $5 million house pay a lot of tax, but they can afford to. Otherwise, why yeah. live in a... Yeah. Somebody who's living in a basic house, they don't have to pay it. Yep. And the great thing about that too is it actually pushes the property into the hands of those who use it best. If somebody's got a huge body of land, they, they, their land tax goes up. They say, well, I'm going to sell that or I'll subdivide, do something. Yes. And then you get 10 other families able to live in the same you area. You have to make it productive. Yeah. yeah. Mm. So you actually push, mm. you, make, you, you bring property prices down, which are ridiculously yeah. high, and you let people live close to where they want, where they want to work and live. Yeah. At the same time, you're raising, you're raising revenue in, yeah. in a fair way. There's, there's so many great ways that we could actually have a fairer and better society and also be more efficient. Yeah. Yeah. And you've seen that as a history man over the... Is that escalating, that um, the polarity? The getting yeah. worse. Yeah. It's very... Look, we had a great um, moderation up to about 1960 or thereabouts. The, the, the gap between rich and poor was actually getting less. Yeah, right. Yep. It was a moderation. There was a whole lot of more community, more togetherness. And it's, it's quite interesting. Back in the 1900, it was very unequal. Yes. By about 1960, 1960s, 1970, we became a much more equal society, and yep. since then the Gini coefficient has, has... And what was that? Um, I think it's a, it's a move to do with, to do with biohistory. I described yep. it in the book. It's, it's a do with a change in the population. In terms, changes in society, changes in economics, politics, everything, ideas, all relate to character. Yeah, yep. And there's a change in character, and it's really a bad one. We'd be a lot better off with a society more like Scandinavia, I reckon, where you had, you had heavier taxes but more done for those who, who need it. I'm, I'm, in that sense, it's a funny thing. I was listening to reading about Anthony Albanese, some of his ideas when he was back in his socialist days, and I thought, well, that sounds pretty good. Yeah, yeah it's, it's interesting. We're, we're but do like... it in a way that doesn't empower the government to take over too much because that makes everybody poor. Yeah. But you can have just systems of distribution which actually are efficient and effective, like carbon taxes and land taxes, which actually help ordinary people and don't distort. Well, and it's giving people that reward for, for getting out and working yes, too. Yes, which they you should know, be. Like, and we have that conversation all the time. Like, if you're rewarding people that are not doing much, what, what, why go out and, you know, and bust mm. your gut to, mm. to Well, taxes, to taxes on income are a problem, too. Yeah, They're yeah. too high. Yeah. They're a, they're a disincentive. They're a disincentive for people to get off the dole and go and get a job. Yeah. So... We need to reduce those. That's why I said it. Then our land tax, carbon tax, those kinds of taxes are actually yeah. positive. Another good tax is, is a, um, um, what do you call it, a, a tax on um, congestion tax. Yes, where yes. Where you tax people who are driving into the city, especially yeah. in peak periods, yep. which actually has the benefit of raising income, but also it, it reduces congestion, reduces pollution and so forth. Yeah. Mm. There's a lot of ideas that you could do which are actually very efficient, cost-effective, good for the society, good for yep. growth, which actually tend to reduce the gap between rich and poor. Yeah, and that can be you know, something that could change that, that, that gap you know, back towards where it should be. Um, I'd like to think it'll happen, but I don't think yeah. so because the character is changing. And, and yeah, how do you change character? Is it, is it diet? Yeah. Is it, you know, You could, but politics, in, in, in practice, it? no. No, not politics, not yeah. diet, not economics, by, by science. Yeah. But this is what I'm talking about. If you, if you understood the nature of it, what happened in mid-century in that month, 1960s, you had a certain kind of character which was very congenial to those kinds of thinking. Yeah. Like, for example, they had very, very high um, marginal tax rates. 
as an yes. example. And there was a lot of, lot of policies at that time, um, strong unions, yep. which tended to push up wages and so forth. A lot of policies that were, did that, but it was based on the, the character of the Australian people yep. or people yep. in other parts of the world. You can't change that unless you change character. That's what we're working on with this research project. Yeah, and a bit like the gyms group, people are buying in. You know, is that like the 1960s and people are buying into society and they're they're happy and they're not worried if they're being taxed a little bit more, but if everyone's happy well, and everyone's being, making money. Being self-employed, you've got so many tax advantages. <laughs> yes, yes. Even if, even if even if they pay on as tax, which we always encourage them to do, but we know yes. a, lot of them, a lot of them have a lot of cash. So yeah, 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 yeah. So we can't do anything about it. Um, anything, boys? No, I think that was brilliant. Have you ever played Finska? No. If you've got half an hour, that yeah, might be... Know. Yeah, we'll see. What, what's Finska? Finska's a... Uh, it's like, it is. like oh, no, bocce. It's Finland, isn't it? Yeah, it's like bocce, but you play with these long uh, wooden, sort of like 10-pin bowls, uh, mm. bocce. Cross bocce, yeah. Yeah, it's... it's... So they'd be good one to anyone, Jim, would be the, um, the TikTok clip, which got like 1.6 million views. Maybe you can tell the boys the joke. Them. Yeah, that one. Yeah, Have one. you got a joke for us? Oh, yeah. Love it. 1.6 million views. You know the joke I'm talking about. It's about the creation of the world. Yes. That one. The noise of the world. The neighbours one. Yeah. Jim's got a lot of jokes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. You're going to get a laugh yeah, out of us, though. Love finish All right. on a joke. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, do, I do enjoy jokes. I keep a list of them there. I remember to add to them. Okay. Okay. This is about the creation of the world, you know. And God and Satan made a deal. And they said, we are going to... The deal was that God could say anything he liked about a particular country, yep. anything at all, and Satan couldn't object to that, but he could add anything else, extra. Yep. So God said, all right, Japan, this is going to be a great country. It's going to have lots of beautiful scenic mountain ranges and gorgeous bays and so forth, and the people are going to be really polite and disciplined and hardworking. And Satan said, right, all of that, but there's going to be so much mountains and so much sea coast, there'll be virtually no flat land at all, and the people will be so hardworking and disciplined and formal and polite that they won't have any opportunity to lay back and enjoy life. So God said, all right, Africa. I'm not going to make that mistake again. Africa is going to have lots and lots. It's got a beautiful mountain ranges and sea coast, but lots and lots and lots of flat land. And the people are going to be, they're going to have so much fun. They're going to be laughing and singing and dancing all day and all night. And Satan said, right. And half the flat land's going to be jungle, and the rest is going to be desert. <laughs> and the people are going to be so busy laughing and dancing that they're going to have plague and famine and berry berry and all, the, all these things. All right, God said, I learned my lesson. New Zealand. New Zealand's going to be done completely properly. Now, New Zealand's going to have beautiful mountain ranges and bays, but lots and lots of fertile flat land. No jungle, no desert. And New Zealanders are going to be people who are Disciplined and hardworking, but at the same time, they're going to be relaxed and easygoing and able to enjoy life. He said. <laughs> Beat that, Satan said, easy. Wait till you see their neighbours. What <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> a slap in the face. So, TikTok, are you a big TikToker? Yep. Well, uh, apparently I am. I've, I've, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. I've never actually looked at TikTok, but this guy does it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. A joke. Oh, yeah, well, it's a good joke, too. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's uh, the jokester. Have you boys got a joke for Jim? I'm terrible at jokes. Uh, I do not know any jokes. Not on not no, the no, podcast. Yeah, <laughs> no, yeah, I can't think of it as a PG. These are all R-rated. Yeah. So, oh, yeah. No, yeah nothing for the podcast. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. We'll try and yeah. think of some. So, <laughs> um, thank you very much, mate. Really appreciate it. It's been an absolute honour. It has. It's going to yeah. be a hard one to top for us. So this is our 10th podcast so far. So we've we've been in training for you, slightly getting better. We've had, <laughs> we've ca had a couple of really bad ones, but uh, we're no, getting it's, better. It's very so. fun. You do well. It's very, it's very entertaining. I do a yeah. lot of these, actually. And, and uh, yeah, I, I like, it's nice to get to talk about everything, I must say. Yeah. I yeah. love business, yeah. but I love a lot of things, other yeah. things too. Yeah. yeah, just having a chat. No, we so. appreciate it. Yeah, thank, thank you, you very time, much. Jim. Us really do time. appreciate it. Okay. Yeah. No Come on. Cheers. Yes. <laughs> Thanks, Jim. Thanks, Mike. What we'll do, Jim, just for them, so...